Find your one in four million. Saturday kickoff. A beautiful day for football in Central Virginia as the Liberty Flames, ranked 22nd in the nation, put their unbeaten record on the line against Western Carolina. The Catamounts playing for the first time in 2020. And with that, we welcome you up into the booth high above Williams Stadium alongside former North Carolina and CFL wide receiver Joe Yock. I'm Matt Warner. And Joe, Liberty has become one of the better stories in college football yeah. this year. Hugh Freeze has his team playing at levels they have never before reached. As you take a look at what they've accomplished, what's been the key to it all? This is a really good Liberty football team. They play well defensively and offensively. They have a three-headed monster at the running back position, explosive receivers. Yeah. But most importantly, they have a Heisman contender at quarterback in Malik Willis. This guy can beat you through the air, and he can also beat you with his legs. Really fun to watch. Liberty has gotten here, winning their last seven games. None more important than their last game a week ago in Blacksburg. A thrilling win over Virginia Tech. Biggest win in program history. Last second field goal to knock off the Hokies, and they bring that momentum with them into today's matchup against Western Carolina. Well, first and foremost, let's welcome Western Carolina Catamounts to the 2020 college football season. It's been a long time to get you here, but we're about ready to kick it off for you. Excited to have you on board. And the Catamounts will receive to start the ball game. First game of 2020. It's been a unique year to say the least for everyone across college football, but certainly for Western Carolina. One of three games that they'll be playing here this fall. So Alex Barbier, first time we've seen him since his historic field goal against Virginia Tech a week ago. He kicks it away, and the Catamounts will take it out to the 25. You mentioned that schedule for the Catamounts. Three games here in the fall. They'll play eight more beginning in February. Liberty, Eastern Kentucky, and then December 11th at North Carolina for Mark Spears' squad. Trying to get game ready, stay game ready since August. Facing so many of the COVID challenges that programs across the country are facing right now. Yeah, I can just see all the fans right now getting ready to yell at the TV and yell at the coaches and the refs and the bad calls. <laughs> well, and what are these broadcasters talking about? They're going to sling it on first down. That's complete near side. Mark Wright getting the start at quarterback. Completes it to Reggie Jones on first down. We had thought we might see Will Jones start at quarterback, but we also know they expect to play multiple QBs here this afternoon. That's right, so what keeps it fun, right? That's right. Western Carolina saying they're going to throw a lot of people out there. As a handoff up the middle, room to run. That's Donovan Spencer. No surprise there. He's a guy that's going to get the ball a lot here today. Yeah, Donovan Spencer, really good running back. What Western Carolina does a good job is being able to spread the field offensively. You saw right there, have a motion man come through, be able to get the linebackers to start to chase that and then hit the ball back up the middle, give you a lot of different looks in this offense. Wright is a dual threat quarterback. He'll get out and run. Flames faced one of those last week and Hendon Hooker. Had some pressure, delivers a strike and another first down. So the Catamounts come out firing and their offense is looking sharp. That was completed to Owen Kosinki, the tight end. Offensive line, you see they're a big strength. They bring back everybody up front this season. And then you've got your playmakers on the outside, a group that is continuing to grow and they hope to get big things from here this year. They're going to throw it again. Another quick completion. Kosinki again on the catch. As these catamounts come out firing and perhaps caught this Flames defense a little bit on their heels. Speaking of that Liberty D, they have been good this season. 32nd in the nation in points allowed per ball game, just over 23. Two really good defense ends in Darrell Johnson and Treshawn Clark. They're not having a chance to get to the quarterback with as quickly as it's coming out of Mark Wright's hands. 
Reggie Jones with his second reception of the ball game. Yeah, really like the thought process early on from Western Carolina. You look at these plays, like you said, Matt, they're trying to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands right away. First play was a quick out. Then you had a little conversion over the middle. Now these short passes, trying to keep that Liberty defensive pressure off of them. Another first down. A little pressure now, and that's going to be thrown away as right at a defender, Jarrell Johnson, in his face. Yeah, potentially had a play right there with the inside slot. He, sl he uh, slipped about 10 yards down the field. Like I said, they were trying to hit with the short passes, and then now that was an opportunity to them where they ran four verticals and were looking to take a deep shot. But the guy potentially who wanted to go to had slipped on that play. Right is Juco transfer. He spent last season at Hutchinson Community College. 27 touchdowns there a year ago. 20 through the air. Seven on the ground as he faces second and long. He's going to keep it and slips a tackle and is able to get four or five. Looked like Jaquan Treadwell had a hand on him there momentarily, but Jaquan not able to get him to the ground and he's able to make some yardage out of him. Yeah, Jaquan Treadwell had a beat on him right there. Did a great job showing patience on the defensive side of the ball, but then able to slip that tackle and pick up three or four yards and put themselves into a third and six situation. Talking with Western Carolina's coaching staff, you know, they basically said, we're using these games in the fall to get ready for the spring. So that means you can expect anything from them. This four down territory, trick plays, you don't know what they might pull out here today. On the move, firing downfield, and the overshot is intended target. He was looking for Mahari stribbling there on the deep route. Great job by Liberty defense right there on the boot action. Was able not allow him to break and tame, and then did a good job in the secondary covering downfield. Interesting to see what they're going to try. A really, this is a 51 yarder, Matt. Yeah, long field goal opportunity. 51 yards, does that sound familiar for Liberty? Well, Liberty nailed one a week ago to win their ball game over Virginia Tech. And that did not have a chance. Well short. And the Flames defense manages to hold. That was Richard McCollum on the kick. It was low as it often is from that distance. And look, oh. the holder even lost the handle a bit. That one was sideways by the time he put his toe into it. Yeah, I got to get those first game jitters off, when, especially for a holder to be able to get that ball put down the right way and give your kicker a chance. But So there's the man everyone's talking about, Malik Willis. You mentioned it, Joe, has put himself into the Heisman conversation. Who would have thought that coming into the year? The transfer from Auburn. He's done it with his arm. He's certainly done it with his legs as well. Yeah, this kid is really special. And if you didn't have the opportunity to see him play this year, uh, you're in for quite a show. Looks to throw it on first down. Completion, far side. I believe that was Noah Frith on the reception. It was. Good to have Frith back and healthy. He played against Virginia Tech a week ago. It was the first time they had both he and C.J. Yarbrough, the two probably be, you'd say best receivers on the field at the same time. So they're getting healthy at the right time of the year. Yeah, that receiving core is, has incredible depth along with a lot of explosive players. They're only going to continue to get better. Josh Mack takes the handoff, has a crease, and has the first down. That's the one thing that we've really seen this year with Liberty as their offensive line has gelled together and they've really established a good running ring game. Seeing something we did not see at all against Virginia Tech. That's a little tempo from this Liberty offense as Mack takes the carry. Another solid pickup on first down. Take a look at this Western Carolina defense. They struggled a season ago. They gave up just under 40 points per ball game, 120th in the FCS in scoring defense. Willis. In the pocket, has time, now fires near side, and that's caught along the sideline by C.J. Yarbrough. See right there, Matt, that is one of the most impressive parts of Malik Willis's game. He took a first read to a second read, didn't panic in the pocket because the protection was there, and then was able to come to his, throw, to his third read and make a completion. Willis, time again, fires into traffic and going up and snagging it was Noah Frith. So that's what you get with Frith back yeah. on the field, that long, rangy type of receiver that can make those plays in a little bit of congestion. Yeah, that's when they, they've had C.J. Yarbo and Noah Frith. 
both battled injuries all year long. And you look out there right now, both of them on the field together. That makes them a different football team. Willis has come out sharp, completing his first three pass attempts. We said last week they really slowed things down, very deliberate against Virginia yeah. Tech, trying to limit the number of possessions in the ball game. Would not expect to see that today. Willis pulls it out, drops it to his tight end, the one-handed snag. Johnny Huntley turns it up, a race to the end zone. He's in, but a flag comes down behind the play. There, 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 wasn't, a, there wasn't a hold on that play, Matt. There was a tackle on that play by DJ Stubbs blocking on the perimeter. Holding. So this one's come back. Offense number five. Ten-yard penalty. First down. So that will take the touchdown off the board. Great snag by the tight end Huntley, but it's all for naught. They put the one hand on this, didn't he? Yeah. Wow. Was, there, that, was, uh, that was a rodeo tackle. Yeah. That's the old buck and bull kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Well, we've seen Liberty really incorporate their tight ends a lot more in recent weeks. All three have caught touchdowns in the last couple of ball games. Yeah. So especially you get down to this part of the field, if you're that Western Carolina defense, you have to be aware of those tight ends. Yeah, Hugh Freeze has traditionally liked to have the tight end very involved in his offense. Yeah, really, really interesting to see how West, Western Carolina can hold up in the front seven with Liberty's run game. They've had done such a good job this year running the football with, with three really good running backs. And that one's Josh Mack makes the first man miss, cuts it back, lowers the shoulder, and it's five or six on first down. And that's what I think that Western Carolina has to do is Liberty, when you watch them on film, they really love, the running backs really love the cutback. And so the Western Carolina linebackers need to play with great eye discipline and be able to fit into their gaps properly in order to stop, stop those cutback plays. Mack had been battling an injury earlier this year, but healthy last week, ran for 90 yards against Virginia Tech. And when he's right, yes. you talk about that three-headed monster at running back, but he's kind of the key. When, yes. when he's going good, everybody else it makes them that much better. Yeah, Jay Mack is is the total package. He can he can run the ball in between the tackles and put his shoulders down. Yet he has enough breakaway speed. So yeah, he definitely leads the crew. Take it to him, rolling out, connecting. That's the tight end Jackson on the reception. So there's another one of those tight ends making a play. It's, Gets up slowly, and the Flames move the chains. Now Jackson's developing into a really good football player. Jackson had a touchdown grab a week ago in Blacksburg, his first of the year. And I think, I think right here, Matt, as, as Liberty moves the ball into the red zone, this is going to be critical for Western Carolina. That is, Liberty is going to move the ball. They're going to complete passes, make plays, but you have to win in the red zone. And off to Josh Mack, a stutter step, and he's thrown down to the turf. That was Willie Hampton getting there and finishing the tackle. Yeah, Willie Hampton played that really well. He didn't shoot up into the gap right away. He let the play develop as a guard pulled around and was able to slide in there and make a good stop. That was good patience by him. Hampton, a kid they originally signed with and redshirted for a season at Nebraska. A kid that has some talent, making plays at that linebacker position for Western Carolina today. Flames slow getting Johnny Huntley on at the tight end spot. Now a little confusion from Western Carolina as they try to substitute. One guy running in, now running back out. Six on the play clock. Willis pulls it out, fires. Big time catch by Yarbrough. Keeps his feet and fights his way down to the three yard line. Boy, he took a shot. Woo. Somehow managed to absorb it. Yeah, I think uh, Malik Willis, as he released that football right here, you can see him release that football. While the ball is in there, he yelled to C.J. Yarbo, look out, because yeah, he was coming. But a great catch over the middle by C.J. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yarbo, another guy that's been trying to get healthy during the early part of this year. But when he is right, he is dangerous, as Virginia Tech learned a week ago. And off, Josh Mack gets down to the one-yard line. Yeah, once again, this is where... The Catamounts have really got to bow their neck defensively. They're going to be put in these situations where you get deep into the red zone. They're going to have to find a way to, to make Liberty kick a field goal and a few of these possessions and keep them out of the end zone. And this is where Liberty is so good and dangerous, too, because Willis is so dangerous Correct. with his legs. 
Mack picking his way through, and he's in. Josh Mack with his third touchdown of the season. And the Flames score on their opening drive of the ball game. Yeah, Josh Mack has a nose for the end zone, along with Peyton Pickett in short yardage situations. But what a start for Liberty. You can see right here, just a simple give up the middle, able to move the offensive line, able to move back that Catamount defensive line and get into the end zone. Good start by Liberty, and Malik Willis' accuracy in throwing the football is on point. Alex Barbier in for the extra point. It is up and good. And the Liberty Flames, 7-0 on the year. Go in front early in Lynchburg. We made USAA insurance for this season. When being a fan on a budget gets tough, our agents do the legwork so saving on auto insurance is easy. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. How do you top the original pan pizza from Pizza Hut? You go beyond. A new plant-based sausage so meaty you have to taste it to believe it. Uh-huh, I see you staring. The new Beyond Pan Pizzas, here for a limited time. No one out pizzas the hut. The Josh Mack touchdown puts Liberty on top of Western Carolina, 7-0. With more on this challenging season for the Catamounts, we check in for the first time with Emily Austin. Yeah, this defense looks a little different with Andy McCollum at the head of it. When head coach Mark Spear was looking for a new defensive coordinator, he wanted to find a young guy full of energy. Well, guess what, guys? 60 is the new 40. They went with... 60-year-old Annie McCollum, who Coach Spears says has the passion of a 40-year-old, brings energy, coaches hard, and really a player's coach. He's not just focused on getting to know the defense. You see him talking up the O-line at practice. Guys, it doesn't hurt that he has almost four decades of collegiate coaching experience, which Coach Spear admits he's already leaned on quite a bit. Yeah, and, and talking with both of those coaches, they say this year has been probably the toughest year ever to bring in. A, a new staff. They have a lot of new staff members on the defensive side of the ball, as you see there. But Coach McCollum saying, we're having to try to meet guys through the Zoom calls. He goes, we didn't have our whole defense with him on the field until October. It's unreal. The, the circumstances of their situation, he talked about having two of the first and second string guys in the meeting room. The third and fourth string guys are on a Zoom call right. trying to listen to me. It's just it would put a, trying to work with an impossible situation. But what a great attitude he had about the whole situation. Toss to Reggie Jones trying to get around the end. That's not happening as he is hit and dropped by that Flames defense. You're watching the All-State Saturday kickoff. Matt Warner, Joe Yawk, Emily Austin here in Lynchburg, Virginia. Second down for the Catamounts of Western Carolina. Again, if you're just joining us, Mark Wright, Juco transfer, getting the start at quarterback for the Catamounts. He's still in there along with Donovan Spencer in the backfield. Here comes some pressure off the edge. Hit and dropped. Quinton Reese came off the corner, and he gets in the backfield for his first sack of the season. Yeah, Quinton Reese coming off on that corner blitz, but I really think Western Carolina needs to get back what they did on the first drive, and that is get the ball out of the quarterback's hands right away. Had a little check down to the tight end through the quick out. That's where they were having their success. On that play, they're trying to be able to stretch the field vertically, and they just don't have the time, especially when you bring those blitzes off the edge. They moved the ball well on their first possession, got into Flames territory before missing a long field goal. Right now, they are heading the wrong direction. Third down and 25 to go. Flames showing just three down linemen. Now brings Joel Johnson in off the edge. They swing it to the back out of the backfield, makes the first man miss, and then Donovan Spencer is bumped out of bounds. Well shy of the first down, and Western Carolina will be forced to punt. Yeah, I think we're getting ready to see right here where one of the most difficult positions that Western Carolina is in is on special teams. This is a team that hasn't played a game. Right. The special teams are the hardest thing to practice live, and Liberty has seven games under their belt, so we'll see how they can hold up on this punt return. Brandon Dickerson in to punt it away. Demario Douglas awaits it. Douglas already took one to the house earlier this season. Flames will play for a return. Douglas bringing it near side. Flag comes down. 
And he's wrapped up and dropped. Now, that was a really good job of being able to stay within the umbrella right there and not allow DeMario Douglas to be able to get to the sidelines. Good job on coverage. Douglas rocking the hoodie today. Oh, yeah, he's going for that. Uh, who's that Green Bay Packers I was, guy? I was Listen, trying to think out. of Somebody's it. Somebody's got uh, it. Yeah. He started it. Remember, he started it. Was, uh, that's going to drive me nuts, man. <laughs> During the return, illegal block in the back by the return team number 14. Ten-yard penalty. First down, timeout. So now back to Flames up just a bit. James Jones was the answer you're looking for. Yeah. We knew we'd get it in before the break. Flames on offense when we return. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. If you have moderate to severe psoriasis, little things can become your big moment. That's why there's Otesla. Otesla is not a cream. It's a pill that treats plaque psoriasis differently. With Otesla, 75% clearer skin is achievable. Don't use if you're allergic to Otesla. It may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Otesla is associated with an increased risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Upper respiratory tract infection and headache may occur. Tell your doctor about your medicines and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Otesla, show more of you. The Allstate Saturday Kickoff is presented by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. What a game a week ago against Virginia Tech. Biggest win in program history. Alex Barbier, 51-yard field goal to clinch it. Just a bizarre set of circumstances Unreal. in the last minute or so of that ball game led to it as you get a look at the Flames kicker. I mean, he did the run, he did the kick. He did the run, and he went to the roll before they ever even got to him. <laughs> he was ready for the pylon. It, you're not bringing you're not, me down. You're not getting him down with an arm tackle. You take <laughs> yeah, a no, look no. at him right there. Yeah. It's going to take more than that. <laughs> so Liberty scored on their first offensive possession. They get it inside their own 25 here. A little sweet pass. Batted in the air a couple of times, and the Flames fortunate. That wasn't intercepted as it was off the hands of DJ Stubbs. Flames trying to get Stubbs involved here this afternoon. We talk about the number of receivers they have. Willis has already hit four of them. That was his yeah. first incompletion. Six of seven so far in this ball game to four different receivers. And now you have C.J. Yarbrough, Noah Frith back, and then you're talking about D.J. Stubbs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, it, it is. You can go across the board. Demario Douglas, uh, Kevin Shaw. You go across the board. They are loaded at the receiver position. Willis going to roll to his right, pump fake, now looks further downfield, and it's broken up. Trying to complete one in there to Frith, and that's broken up. We talked about Liberty's kicker. Let's hear a little bit more about him from our own Emily Austin. Emily? Yeah, guys, Barbier isn't your average-looking kicker. He has the build of, like, the rock, you know? <laughs> he can bench press 420 pounds. He's only 5'9", 220. And his legs are just as jacked when he found out that the kicker position was open here at Liberty. Guess where he was? The student gym. Yeah, weight room. <laughs> That's right. Started his career at Penn State. Injuries. Just kind of said, said he started to... Just dislike football. Yeah. Well, I'll tell Quit. you this much right now. Yeah. When that, nobody's kicking sand in that kicker's face when no, he goes to no. the pitch. Not at all. Willis rolling. See if he decides to keep it. He does. A foot race, and he picks up the first down. Being chased, but had just yeah. enough to get the yardage needed. Uh, I mean, that, that is a perfect example of what Malik Willis does. Western Carolina plays great on first down, plays great on second down. Third and long, they have it covered. And he just breaks. Oh, it looks like he's about a yard short. So wow. they put in a fourth down situation. Yeah, but it has a cover and pick, gives him the opportunity to go for it on fourth down. Looked like he had gotten it by at least a yard. But the Flames will leave that offense on the field. So fourth down. And talk about a big opportunity for this Western Carolina defense. Peyton Pickett in the backfield with Willis. They pitch it to him. And he didn't get there. I don't think he got it. The defense with some penetration. And that was Darius Smith shooting in there for the tackle. So the Flames elect to go for it on fourth, and it backfires. 
Really, really nice play by Smith right there. So you're Western Carolina. You need a little momentum. You need a spark early on. They have just gotten it. They'll have great field position when we come back. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. This holiday season is going to be different. We'll celebrate old traditions in different ways and create new traditions as part of our new normal. America's retailers are ready. Join us in a new tradition. Shopping safe and shopping early. You'll protect retail workers, your family, and your community. Because we all deserve a happy and healthy holiday season. Shop safe. Shop early. Fresh off their big double overtime win against Clemson. We'll have the second-ranked Fighting Irish in Boston College today, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, and then at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. It's number 13, Wisconsin and Michigan at the Big House in Ann Arbor. Both games on ABC and the ESPN app. A little history lesson for you here, Joe. To take you back to the last time Notre Dame was coming off a win against the top-ranked team, 1993, they knocked off Florida State. Their next ball game, Boston College, they lost. Uh oh. So those don't sleep on the Eagles. Yeah, those baby. Don't, no history are doomed to repeat it, Joe. Yes. That's all I'm saying. So you can don't bet. Don't sleep on the Eagles. You can bet Notre Dame is aware of that. As Western Carolina taking the field after a big defensive stand, now running for his life, right? Just getting out of the clutches of that Liberty defense and able to make something positive happen. Well, how big was that fourth down stop for Western Carolina? Liberty on the year. 14 of 16 on fourth down this year. They were 4 of 4 against Virginia Tech a week ago, but not able to get the job done against the Catamounts. Yeah, Liberty has no hesitation whatsoever going forward on fourth down, and that is a major stop for the Catamounts. Right, looking to throw, swings it to the running back, Spencer. Near side, he's bumped out of bounds. He'll be shy of the first down by a few yards. As he took a shot right along the sideline. Yeah, the Catamounts have been calling a lot. Right there, they went to a horizontal play, but they've been calling a lot of plays where they're trying to get guys downfield. The previous play before on the scramble, he had man coverage and trying to go downfield. I really like to see him get back into the underneath stuff. They go quick now, and he's in trouble. Dropped. Darrell Johnson got there, and Mark Wright did not stand a chance. Yeah, now this puts you in a strange situation. You're looking at fourth and 10, but the ball's on, what, the 32, 33-yard line? Looks like they're planning on leaving the offense out there. Well, it's your first game of the season. You're only playing three in the fall. Might as well hey, take a few chances. Let's go. Got man-to-man -man coverage in the bottom here. And here at the bottom of your screen, that's Mahari Stribling. Three wide receivers to the left as they look to the sideline. Five seconds on the play clock. No timeout. They may need to take a timeout. And they will. Yeah, it looked in that situation that Liberty was playing man across the board and planning on bringing some pressure. They may have been given that as a pre-snap look and then bail out and, and play zone. So just take some time to think over the right play at the right time right now. So Mark Spear going to talk things over. Spear, ninth season, has done a good job at Western Carolina. Has a history of uh, being an app state. Really when their program was getting up and rolling. And he's yeah. done a nice job here as well. Western Carolina, when he talked about it when we chatted with him this week. They were struggling when he took this yeah. program over, and he has led them to some solid success. You take a look at really those three seasons to highlight. Struggled last year, only three and nine, and they're young again this season. They don't have a lot of veterans right. on this team. So in some ways, the way the schedule breaks down for them, this might be ideal. You get three games under sure, your belt. They sure. really don't mean yeah. a lot for you here in the fall. Then you have until February to kind of reevaluate and figure out what you saw and what you have, and then you go from there. Well, yeah, and I learned one thing about Coach Spear. He, whatever the positive spin is on it, he's going to take that spin. I, it's kind of your it's, only choice. Uh, yeah, you know? it is your only choice. You're exactly right. Now, this is the opportunity. The Catamount fans are on the edge of their seat for fourth down. Are they going to well, be? Well, not now. They're punting. Oh, they're punting? Yeah, oh, okay. I, I mean, I'm if you're a big special teams fan, I guess you still would be. Oh, I thought we were going to get an exciting call here on fourth down. They're going to try to pin the flames deep. 
checks up inside the 10, and they play it perfectly. Uh, Lanes will have it at the nine yard line. Really like to see him go for it on that fourth down, that situation. This Liberty offense is so explosive, they can gain back that 20 yards and a 20, 30 yards in a blink of an eye. Talking about Mark Spear on one sideline, on the other, Hugh Freeze. What a job he's done for the Flames. In fact, he's done so well. He's gotten his second contract extension in 11 months. <laughs> Got one earlier this week through 2026. Says he is just loving what he has yeah. here at Liberty. You hear so many rumors swirling around the country about oh, could he be you know plucked by a power five. He says, hey, right now, I just my, my yeah, both he, he and his family, there. they love That's it right. here in Lynchburg, and he thinks this Flames program can be one of the best group of five programs in the nation within the next couple of years. I bet athletic director Ian McCaw said, tried originally to go with the 2056 extension. <laughs> Hand up, nice run on first down. That's Josh Mack continuing to turn those legs as he gets about 13. Yeah, you're gonna see right here, I know you wanna play, you know, play good defensive football, but at the same time to be in Liberty side of the field and have the opportunity to go for it on fourth down, they can make this ground up really quick. And off again, Mack trying to pick his way through for a few yards, and he'll get about four. Here's that run a moment ago from Josh Mack. This offensive line gets so much credit for the Flames' success this season. And that's one of the things they do really good is they're able to wash a defensive line down. Then you look Johnny Huntley pulling that tight end and being able to come out and kick out the defensive end. Good strike on the slant to C.J. Yarbrough. And the Flames move the chains. See, it's just too, it's just too easy. Now, they, the Western Carolina, if they want to be in this game, they got to take those chances. Yeah. And so now, in three, four plays, they've moved the ball all the way up to the 42-yard line. You're going to have to take some risk on the offensive side of the football in order to give yourself a chance in this game. Four wide receivers set now for Liberty. Willis, last time the pocket, fires into traffic, and that was intended for C.J. Daniels, but broken up. And that was A.J. Rogers on the play. I like what Rogers did right there, and they've shown this some early, is that they are sitting on some routes. But now you can make some plays and bat some balls down, potentially get a bat a ball, then interception, those type of things. But you're also leaving yourself to the deep ball, and Liberty has the threats to take the ball deep downfield. Free play. Hard count, got a free play. Here's a chance to take it deep downfield. They'll do so, launching it far side. Jump ball, a shoving going on, and it's dropped. They may get offensive pass interference yeah. on Noah Frith on top of that. It's as he uh, gave a shove to the DB. So that's just an offsetting penalty replay the down, correct? I look to you for all of yeah, my officiating. Yeah, I think we're, I'm just... You like the opportunity one-on-one -on -one deep down the field. There are two field. fouls. Offside number 99. Offensive pass interference, offense number 81. Fouls will offset. Replay second. He had his big receiver downfield. Frith got a little physical. Yeah, there's the offside. Malik just chucks it deep. A little cover two look. Safety comes off the hash, and he says, get off me. That's oh, Jacob oh, Harris wow. taking a shot to the chest there. So after all that, still second and ten. Willis pulls it out, delivers it. Little strike there to Johnny Huntley for about three yards. And the Flames will face a third and long. You know, you look at that play right there. I know that was a design boot play to, to Johnny Huntley, but the hole that Joshua Mack had right yeah. there, if he would have just handed the ball off to him, he might have been running, ran right into the goal post for a touchdown. Flames need seven. Willis trying to hard count again. We'll do the rest on the other side of the break. Head to the second quarter. Low scoring first quarter here in Lynchburg. Flames lead by a touchdown. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. We made USAA insurance for this season. When being a fan on a budget gets tough, our agents do the legwork so saving on auto insurance is easy. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. USAA. Kick off your Week 10 NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern with the Countdown Crew on ESPN and the app. With record-setting comebacks across the league, 
Now let's explore the mystery of no momentum. No mystery there. You just play the Falcons or the Chargers, I think, is the way it goes, Joe. Plus the best mic'd up moments from the season's first half. They'll have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and preview each game right up to kickoff. Flames looking to add to their lead. Malik Willis going to keep it across midfield and ducks under a tackle as he picks up about 12. What a great play call on third down, a big third down conversion for Liberty. What they do right there is they run the inside receivers on short hook routes that be able to pick up that seven yards. That causes, when you play zone coverage, causes the outside, the inside linebackers to expand out, which then opens up that quarterback draw lane from Malik Willis and picks up a quick 12 yards. Willis has rushed for 18 so far on the day. Eight of 11 throwing the football. Pulls it out, looking downfield, takes a shot. Wide open tight end, Johnny Huntley. 10-5 touchdown. Liberty's becoming tight end you with as much as they're using their big tight ends offensively. Yeah, they like to throw that ball down the seams, the tight ends. They've had a lot of success with that play. I think there was some confusion on the defensive side of the football right here. The nickelback expanded out way too far, and they had no safety in the middle of the field. And Johnny Huntley's able to take to the house. Former wide receiver at Colorado has really turned himself into a good pass-catching tight end for the Flames. Had one wiped off the board earlier in this game, you'll remember, because of a penalty. Alex Barbier in for the point after. Up and good, just like that. Early second quarter, the Flames cap off a seven-play drive with this touchdown toss to Johnny Huntley. This Liberty offense just keeps on rolling. design is amazing. It's very thin, too. You and mine's pink. What? It's touchscreen. It's touch screen. I can't believe you bought these for us. Hello, me. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. Liberty on top of Western Carolina, 14 to nothing. Now let's take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Goodyear. Take a look at the top 10, AP poll. How about Indiana? What a season they've had. You know, there's certain programs Number like that. 10. You just, even if you have no connection to them, you're kind of thrilled for them and for their fan base to get to experience what they have so far this yeah, year. No doubt. Great year for them. BYU as well there at number Cincinnati. eight. They made a lot of noise. Cincinnati. Saw them play last night. I mean, they can, they can put some points out. These Liberty Flames trying to continue to inch their way up the top 25. First time ever they had cracked top 25. I mean, they've only been playing FBS football now. You know, three years they've been playing and already have worked their way into this position, ranked 22nd in the nation. Yeah, you look around Liberty University, it's a university that's totally committed to football, and they built the facilities and bring in Hugh Freeze and the contract extension, and they're doing all the right things to build a top-tier FBS football program. All right, looks like we're going to get a change at quarterback now for Western Carolina. We thought we would see Will Jones at the outset. We did not. We got Mark right on the first few possessions, but Jones will now take over. Redshirt Jr. out of Greensboro, North Carolina. See if he can inject some life into this Catamount offense. Hands it off to Caleb Ferguson, his first carry. Trying to get the edge and is just able to turn the corner for a couple of yards on first down. Yeah, you take a look at Will Jones right there. You watch him on film. He is like 6'4", 220 pounds, more of a pocket passer. He's not going to have as much scrambling. But what he does a really good job, he throws the vertical seams very well. His timing's good. He puts the ball on the line. He's able to clear linebackers. He does a really good job with that play. He's going to keep it this time as a flag comes down. He's hit and drops just across the 30-yard line. But first, we'll see what the call is on the field. Personal foul. 
hands to the face. Defense number 55. 15 yard penalty added on to the end of the run and an automatic first down. Penalty on Elijah James as it will move Western Carolina 15 yards downfield. With more on the Catamounts and some of the uh, challenges they face this year, we check in once again with Emily Austin. Yeah, Matt, it's been difficult for all football programs to manage this season with COVID-19. Coach Mark Spears said, I'm on my 58th schedule. I quit buying pens, only use pencils. I even put in an order for those separate, you know, big pink erasers with all of these changes. But regardless, he's thankful for the day and hoping to attack this one. And off once again, Caleb Ferguson, short pickup. Yeah, you know, he's told us, we as a coaching staff look at this like, if we can lead our team with all of these challenges, what kind of life lessons are we going to impart to these guys that they can take with them for the rest of their life? If we can lead during this kind of adversity, right. you, know, we, you can do it anytime. Time in the pocket, open tight end down the middle of the field, caught by Kosinki, and he rumbles inside the 25. Yeah, perfect example of it right there with Will Jones, and able to stretch the field vertically, patient in the pocket, then deliver a strike. This offense is moving, they pick up the tempo a bit. Third reception for Kosinki on the ball game. As he's been a big part of their offense. Looking downfield again, throwing, little back shoulder, nice snag on the near sideline. Catch made by Daquan Patton. And you're seeing Will Jones inject some life into this offense. Yeah, those are two really good throws by Will Jones. He hit back shoulder, hit the vertical seam, and then comes back and hits a back shoulder fade, put it right on the money. Good job. They got to get points in the red zone if they want to stay competitive in this game. Make the handoff, rolling out, throwing across his body, and probably fortunate that didn't have enough to get it there. Was trying to target Daquan Patton. Yeah, good play call on first down after a long throw on the on the back shoulder fade to be able to come out and then run that boot action, get three receivers. He had a shot early in the throw, waited on a little bit, and at least didn't throw, throw an interception there, and ball is able to fall to the ground harmlessly. Second goal from the nine yard line. Jones played in six games last season, so he's got some playing time under his belt, certainly. Gonna throw it again, pressure coming. On the move, man wide open, touchdown. The backup tight end, Clayton Bardall, all by his lonesome. And the Catamounts are on the board. The other thing that you watch on film with Jones is his ability to stay alive. And on this play, they're trying to throw a slant early, got pressure up the middle, and he's able to stay alive, bring the linebacker up, and throw the ball over top of his head. Just a veteran headsy play by him. So the Catamounts about to cut this Flames lead in half. Richard McCollum on for the extra point. through seven plays 75 yards will jones leading western carolina to the end zone first touchdown of the 2020 there you season go. for the catamounts they're having some fun catamounts today catamounts are cheering chest bump i wasn't going very far sometimes i just forget This holiday season is going to be different. We'll celebrate old traditions in different ways and create new traditions as part of our new normal. America's retailers are ready. Join us in a new tradition, shopping safe and shopping early. You'll protect retail workers, your family, and your community because we all deserve a happy and healthy holiday season. Shop safe, shop early. 14-7, Liberty on top. You're watching the All-State Saturday kickoff. Coming to you from Lynchburg, Virginia. Picture perfect day for football. Well, these teams have met six times previously in their history. All knotted up. Three wins apiece. In fact, the last time they met, 2008, one Rashad Jennings was yes. both toting the rock for the Flames. He went on to have a nice career in the NFL and beyond. Hey, maybe more famous for his victory on Dancing That's with true. the Stars. That's true. So something has to give, as they say. This yes. series won't be knotted any longer after today's ballgame. 
Western Carolina gets on the board. It's good to see Western Carolina get their first touchdown of the season. The fans back home watching, gave a little fist pump, maybe spilled a little popcorn on the floor, <laughs> had a little college football. Get them pumped up. A few Catamounts fans making their way here to Lynchburg. Only about 1,000 fans allowed in the stadium for today's ball game. There's a few folks wearing purple. That kick going to bounce out the back of the end zone as Malik Willis and company will take the field once again. Willis, with that touchdown toss earlier in the ball game, has now accounted for 20 touchdowns this season for Liberty. He missed one game due to injury, so he's only played now a little over six games. Uh, you talked about the Heisman hype that's building around him. Hard to do from a place like Liberty yeah. without a lot of tradition yeah. and a lot, of, a lot of buzz early in the year. But he has, with his play on the field, generated a lot of attention. Here's the thing with it. it. You could say, oh, you're trying to get a little Heisman hype, but after watching him play so much, it is legit Heisman hype. He is that good. Shedro Lewis in the ball game for the first time at the running back. Malik going to roll out, plants his feet, looking downfield, has Demario Douglas all alone, comes back to the football, and then drops it. Still loose on the deck. Was he able to fall back on top of it? The officials come together, and he did. That was a crazy play. Let's there was no one within three it. or four yeah, yards of him when he caught that football. And it was going to just be a race to the end zone. Oh, that must be a good angle here to see if he actually. No, that's I think that's pass. an incompletion. Yep, yeah, 100%. I'm with you. And they're going to take a look at it, I believe. No, there's actually a timeout call by Western Carolina, I think, to give them an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Liberty's going to try to because, go yeah, and snap he, it as fast as they could. He never had possession of that football, at least based on that look. One more look as we head to break. Demario Douglas all by himself. Maybe too open. Unable to haul it in. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. How about no? No. Uh-uh, no way. Come on, no. 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 Only Discover has no annual fee on any card. Well, this is going to be ruled incomplete. The chain gang has already moved back to the original line of scrimmage, so perhaps looking at the uh, how much time was on the game clock as he get another look. Demario Douglas wide open. Yeah, you can see right here he was so wide open. He had his eyes looking towards the end zone before he looked that catch into the tuck and wasn't able to hold on. Got to always, you young receivers out there, always remember this. Take your eyes are the one that catches the football. Take your eyes to the tuck all the way in with the football. So a big play taken off the After board. further review, the receiver never had firm control of the football, therefore it's an incomplete pass. The ball will be brought back to the previous spot Second down, and game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 12.02, and the clock will start on the snap. I hear a smattering of booze, man. And Western yeah. Carolina will not be charged their second timeout because replay was contacting us before the timeout. Oh, there you go. All you, all you get is a smattering a with smattering. a 1,000 fans. Yeah. You don't it's get much more than that. There is yeah. nothing to boo about right yeah. there. That's clearly the right call. One Demario Douglas would like to have back, certainly. That's, That's right. Demario Douglas, a really good football player. He's made some great plays. Uh, deep threat, explosive. Has had some outstanding games. He'll shake that off and, and be ready to roll. So second down. Give it to Shedro Lewis. Able to pick up a couple of yards, not much there. Shedro, the smallest of the running backs, but also the most explosive for Liberty. Yeah, Shedro Lewis can flat up get up and go. He, you give him a crease, there's a good chance you're not going to stop him. But I really like what Western Carolina is trying to do defensively. And their four-man front, they're taking their two inside linebackers, showing that they're coming up for a blitz, giving Malik some different looks, and then plugging up that middle right there on those inside runs. Good job. 
So third and long. Liberty's converted one of their two third down opportunities so far today. Willis with time, steps up, looking deep downfield, looking for Kevin Shaw. Can he get there? The diving attempt, and he made the grab. He laid it out there for Shaw, and he's able to haul it in. Now this Liberty offense wants to go quickly. Willis pulls it out, fires. Catch made for a short pickup. That was Trevor Hobbs, the senior tight end, his first reception of the season. They get all the tight ends. They involved. got everybody involved. What a great post route run by Kevin Shaw and a great job by Malik Willis to be able to hold the football. There was nothing there under lease, underneath, and then he was able to throw that deep post. I'd like to see the replay. They're moving so fast we can't get to a replay to see him make sure he made that catch. Yeah, that may have been part of the reason for the tempo. The fast pace we saw from the Flames. Now the handoff going to Shedro Lewis. Able to pick up a few yards, and it looks like it'll be about two or three yards shy of the first down. Yeah, it's a big third down stop here for, for Western Carolina. Look at the deep throw by Malik Willis. Able to throw the ball probably 60 yards. What a nice catch by Kevin Shaw. Be able to get his hands under it, look it all the way in. Pick up the big play, really nice job. But that's what Malik Willis does, is not only can he run the football, he can throw the underneath stuck and throw the wide field outs, and yet at the same time, throws a deep post with great accuracy. Third and two, Willis gonna keep it. Turning it up, great blocking, and he walks it in. And then he does that. You know, that is, that's how they set that play up. You look at those short yardage games with Shedder Lewis run up the middle, keeping those inside linebackers in, and now all of a sudden, as they stay in on a third and two, he pulls the ball out, gets the edge, and with his athleticism, it's a touchdown. You look right here, you fake inside, hold those two inside linebackers in, defense in, needs to stay at home, he squeezes down and just, you're not gonna be able to stop the speed of Malik Willis unless you stay home and force him back inside. Extra point up and through, Willis, now with eight rushing touchdowns on the season. Once again, showing why he's one of the most, most dangerous quarterbacks in the country. And he's done it against everybody. Yeah. I mean, it's not yeah. like, I know early in the year people were saying, oh, Liberty hasn't really played anybody yet. Listen, he played well against Syracuse. Virginia Tech had no answer for him. Everyone he has run into everybody. this year, everybody. he has sliced and diced. Malik Willis is not just athletically confident, he is athletically arrogant. <laughs> that's, that's all I have to say about that. Well, he has reason to be. As he puts the Flames in front by two scores. Again, a kid coming from Auburn. He wanted to play last year, transferred to Liberty. They tried to get the waiver, did come through for him. Once he kind of shook off the initial disappointment, now he says, yeah. well, that was the best thing that could have happened to yeah. me. You really able to get in and understand Hugh Freeze's offense. And he talks about, too, just growing, just in, in maturity as a right, young as man, a person, just right. as a person. And it's all come together. He and Hugh Freeze have been a dynamic duo for the Flames this year. And the biggest reason, they're sitting at 7-0 yeah. right now. Yeah, Hugh Freeze is, has the schemes to give Malik Willis the best chance to win. And Ken Austin, the offensive coordinator, has the fundamentals. He coaches the fundamentals so well. So Western Carolina will have to try to answer now. And a good possession last time this offense was on the field. Will Jones coming off the bench. Led yeah. them on a nice scoring drive, getting the tight ends involved. We've seen a lot. Listen, if you're a fan of tight end play, this is the game for you. On both <laughs> sides, the tight ends have been heavily involved. See right there, Will Jones does a great job. Just keep the play alive. Keep the play alive and then force the linebacker, put in a position where you break contain, he steps up and you throw to good savvy. So he remains in at quarterback. Mark Wright started the game, got the first few possessions for the Catamounts. Pressure coming and can't get away from that. Hit, dropped. Now was Trace John Clark getting to him and taking him to the ground. Yeah, Treshawn Clark, Rell Johnson, you're able to see, ooh, that was a nice little move to the inside right there and be able to get
to the quarterback, collapse the pocket. The two defensive ends, actually there's depth at the defensive end position for Liberty, but the two defensive ends, uh, uh, Treshawn Clark, I'll tell you what, they can rush the passer. Flames already with three sacks on the day. Clark Johnson, one apiece. Quentin Reese also with one coming off the corner. Tyler, QB designed run now, able to get across the 15 and get back a little bit closer to that original line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third long. You know, definitely not the situations that the Catamounts want to be in in these third and longs, especially after a, after a quick touchdown by Liberty on the deep throw and run. So they need to figure out a way to convert this. Third and 12. Tight end has been a big part. Do they go that way? No, they come near side. The catch made, and it's going to be, it looks like, just shy of what they needed. Daquan Patton, the redshirt senior, making the grab. Yeah, they're going to be a full yard and a half, two yards away. Looks like they're bringing up the punt team. Looks like they will. So fourth and short, they elect to punt it away. Patton, you may remember his dad. David Patton played 12 years in the NFL. Yeah. A lot of time with with the uh, Patriots, actually. Yeah. Got a few Super Bowl rings with them. Daquan started as a walk-on. Has really worked himself I into. I didn't know that. That probably, guy can play. Yeah, he was great. Daquan, had, one of the better receivers on this squad now. He had some Super Bowl games. So Demario Douglas awaits the punt and flies via the whistle. They may not have snapped it in time. They had delay of game. So that'll back them up a little bit more. Joe, you talked about special teams being something yeah. where if you haven't played for a long time, what, what is it that it's hard to get back in sync special teams-wise? Is it a timing thing? Because we saw it really across the country as teams have started right. playing and conferences have started playing, special teams have been very shaky. Sure, sure. The, the special teams part of things gets difficult because especially in the first game, punt team I think is the most difficult. Not only have to protect, you got to cover, get down there, and you have to snap, the punt, all these things. There's so many moving parts to it. And Dickerson, it's the left foot into it, low driving so kick, one hop a big turn. hop. Tomorrow Douglas scoops it up, now reverses field. Trying to make that one man miss, just tripped up and he'll be shy of the 40 yard line. Where the Flames will take over. Liberty up a couple of scores, Malik Willis set to lead that offense back on the field when we come back. If you have moderate to severe psoriasis, little things can become your big moment. That's why there's Otesla. Otesla is not a cream. It's a pill that treats plaque psoriasis differently. With Otesla, 75% clearer skin is achievable. Don't use if you're allergic to Otesla. It may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Otesla is associated with an increased risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Upper respiratory tract infection and headache may occur. Tell your doctor about your medicines and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Otesla, show more of you. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. Fresh off their big double overtime win against Clemson. We'll have the second ranked Fighting Irish in Boston College later today, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. And at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, it's number 13 Wisconsin and Michigan at the Big House in Ann Arbor. Both games are on ABC and the ESPN app. Wisconsin uh -oh. just wants to play some football. Uh -oh. They have had a struggle just getting back on the field since that big win back on October 23rd. You see that there, the games have canceled. And for Michigan, uh oh. Our boy Reese Davis uh -oh. on game day said if they lose today, it'll be the worst start since pre Bo Schimbeckler. How about that? They are struggling right now in Ann Arbor as Malik Willis with a nice run on first down. I mean, you think things are running a little tight in Ann Arbor yeah. right now? A night game against Wisconsin that with what you just said yeah. on the line? Yeah. Woo! I don't know if I'd want to be in those hotel meetings right now. Things are tight. That is the first down. It's a look That's at Malik Willis, game. his day so far. He's thrown for a buck 76 in a score. He's also run for 39 in a score. This is one of Liberty's favorite formations, and they can do so many different things out of it. 
Oh, ball's loose on the deck. Willis has to fall on top of it. Well, if there's been one knock, one criticism yeah. of Malik Willis this year, it's been just hanging on to the football. Ball right. security. He's put it on the deck a number of times. In fact, this week, Hugh Free said, I made him take off all his wristbands, bracelets. He goes, I don't know if that'll help or not, yeah. but we're just trying something. And they had a play right there. They had a play that run a little counter boot action, bringing the, the inside receiver across. He was wide open and just put the ball on the deck. Yeah, that would be the one and only thing. You can't get on for running. You can't get on for decision making. You can't get on for accuracy across the board, but he will put the ball on the turf every once in a while. Although it looks like he put the bracelets back on, so maybe that didn't <laughs> stick. A little pressure. Willis jumps out of it. Now weaving his way through traffic, and he's about three yards shy of the first down as a late flag comes in. Flag coming in from the secondary. So we'll sort this out. It would be about third and three if the play stands. Yeah, that was a, let's see what this call is. Personal foul, targeting, defense number 33. That play is under further review. Wow, well that's Curtis Roach, sophomore linebacker. Let's have a look as he came in right at the end of that play. Is he 33? There was contact helmet to helmet. It didn't appear to be Get one more look there. Yeah, he caught him in the helmet. I mean, it wasn't. That's kind of. That's tough. You know, that it wasn't like really a violent. Tough. That wasn't a dirty play. No, that was, a quarterback that's getting tough. taken down. You're trying to get in, and, and and that's that's a tough break for the young man Curtis Roach. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how this one plays out because, you know, if you go by the the letter of the law, you could say, yeah, it's there, and the contact is there. But let's take another look at it. Yeah, I think yeah, he's, he's probably sort of pops be, him on the. He's probably going to be done for the day, based yeah, on, I hate to see on that. the looks that we see there. And you know, sometimes you feel like you can judge intent yeah. on some that you see that are just so yeah. uh, obvious and flagrant. This is not one of those. No, he's trying to get his shoulder in there and do a good job tackling. No intent whatsoever, but yet at the same time, it's it's the day and age that we live in now with the targeting rule, trying to protect the player's safety and. Just hate it for that young man. Curtis Roach, his dad, is actually a Western Carolina Hall of Famer kicker. His dad, Kirk, one of the greats. Here at Western Carolina, his son playing linebacker now for the Catamounts. And unfortunately, Looks like his day is going to come to a uh, early close. Well, you know what, though? Yet at the same time, I've also seen other ones that have looked a lot worse than that, and they haven't thrown the player out of the game. So we'll see here. Number seven will have to go out one play due to the fact that he lost his helmet. It'll be third down at the dead ball spot, and the game clock will start on my signal. So he said no targeting. He did say no targeting. So he, here, his mic was off. So there. in the end, it is there we go. possibly Good being a for benefit now. for Western Carolina. No go. targeting, and because the helmet came off for Malik Willis on come third down, he's got to come out of the ball game. I think with I think Liberty has all three timeouts. Although somebody might want to tell yeah. Malik because he's out there right well, now. Well, I think what you can do is call a timeout did in they order use to keep one? him in the game. I imagine that's what they did. Oh, no, the ref wound the clock, so obviously they didn't call a timeout and haven't noticed that Malik is still in the game. So after all that, it's third and three. Yeah, he stopped. And now it. he, he saw, I was yeah, watching like, him. Hold up, hold up. He went to the whistle to the mouth, then he pulled it away, then he went back you. again. And, uh, you, oh, hey, wait, you're not seven. supposed to hold be here. Hold on. Go to your room, young man. <laughs> here, here's what I love about Hugh Freeze. Do not be surprised <laughs> right now. If Ferguson comes in the ball game and throws a 50-yard seam oh, right yeah. down the middle of the field. He doesn't care. We've seen it before where you think, all right, they're going to go conservative, run yeah. the ball, and they take a shot. So Chris Ferguson, an accomplished quarterback in his own right from the University of Maine, this time he hands it off, and the Flames will pick up the first down on that run by Josh Mack. Yeah, he's done that. We've seen that happen before. So now Big Willis goes. will come back in. The 
it's kind of like in basketball where a guy gets fouled, but you see if you can slip in the better free throw shooter. <laughs> yeah, you put yeah, him wait, at the wait, line to see if anybody doing? notices. And like, wait, yeah. you, you weren't fouled. <laughs> if you can get away with it. Yeah, another one of Liberty's favorite formations with the offset tight end. They run a wide variety of things in both the run game and the pass game right here. Bring the tight end back in motion sometimes. Let him kick out, boot with him. Malik back to the other side. This is one of their absolute favorite formations. They give. Mack runs into a wall. He stood up and taken down for no gain. There's been times where Western Carolina's defensive front has done a good job holding up at the line of scrimmage. They talk about defense alignment building a flat wall across the across the board and being able to hold their gap, gap integrity. And they've had some plays where they've done a really good job of that. Looks like there's an injury. Catamount here. Darius Bell, redshirt freshman who was in on the tackle down on the field. Young man out of Gilbert, South Carolina. So the Catamount training staff will come on and check him out. Yeah, you hate to see that working on his knee. Hopefully that's that's not too bad, but you, you never like to see that. And I imagine the, the depth issues for Western Carolina has got to be a concern for Coach Spear. So far today, while Liberty's had a lot of success through the air, you kind of to almost say that you know, Western Carolina has done a decent job yeah. to, with this Liberty ground game. Yeah, had a Malik, big fourth down stop. Malik Willis has had some success, but Josh Mack averaging four and a half yards a carry as a team. Liberty right around five, which you know normally isn't great. Yeah. But with the, the explosive running game Liberty has shown throughout the year, Western Carolina, right. they're hanging in there. Yeah, and the, but the, the issue with it is what Hugh Freeze does and, and, and offensive coordinator Ken Austin do such a good job. They'll set you up. Yeah. They'll set you up for this. They'll hit you in the middle. Hit you. You look at the last touchdown run by Malik Willis. They set. They use plays in the beginning of the game to set up plays later in the game, and that usually has something to do with Malik football. With Malik Willis running the football a very long distance. Mack remains in the game at running back. Yeah, back to the offset, tight end formation right here. Here comes pressure off the edge. Flames pick it up, taking a shot downfield. C.J. Daniels behind the defense, and he's in. Malik Willis dropping it in the bucket. Daniels hauls it in for the score. Yeah, you look at it right here. What Liberty does a great job in pass protection. They try to bring a blitz off the outside. Daniels gets the Elysian man-to-man coverage. No free safety in the middle. Daniels just has too much speed. Malik Willis just has too much accuracy. When you take those chances, you've got to get to the quarterback right away. And what a great job by Liberty in pass protection. That's a little bit like one of those Russell Wilson deep balls. High arcing, dropped it right in on target. And quickly the Flames score again. Seven different receivers have caught passes now today for this Flames offense. Check in once again with Emily Austin. You guys were talking about Malik and his improvements this season. I asked Coach Freeze about how much Malik's decision making has improved. He said monumental since spring, even fall camp. Quarterback coach Ken Austin added that Malik has also corrected his lower body and not compensating with his arm delivery as much. He's also not over-exaggerating his pocket movement, and now he's able to stay and slide in the pocket with much more confidence. Emily Austin with a detailed report yeah. from the sidelines. Love it. <laughs> When it comes to quarterback mechanics, <laughs> there's no there's nobody like Emily. I mean, we appreciate that. Yeah, that Emily's was great. great. But that is true. And what Emily, the point that Emily's trying to bring right there is we talked about earlier. Ken Austin develops the fundamentals of quarterbacks as good as there is, and to see the improvement. Because what yeah. was the knock? Well, we, we talked about this before the season. How accurate is he? Right. How well can he can he throw the Part ball? Part of it was it, just the unknown. The unknown of it, but. He didn't have a historically when they first worked with him. He didn't have a, a, a the, his accuracy wasn't his best attribute. Obviously, he was he was athletic, but to see that develop and what Hugh Freeze does such a good job is, for example, he'll take half the field and eliminate it in an offensive play. They yeah. oh, do you have to read the whole field? No, he'll eliminate half the field and give his read over here to make it to a one-two read. So he's, they've just done such a good job coaching of Malik Willis. Reggie Jones on the return, hit and dropped. I believe that was Matt Terrell on the tackle. It was senior linebacker. Matt Terrell, a local product here from, from Lynchburg, went to Liberty Christian Academy. 
So right now, in your Western Carolina, you're saying four minutes left. If we can just get some points yeah. here, finish out the half, put some points on the board here before the break, kind of put yourself in at least a manageable situation heading to the second half as we already get a flag on the field. Illegal substitution by the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, that'll drive a coach crazy. Yeah. You don't want those, but Western Carolina right now, like you said, needs to move the ball down the field, get back to the, do what they do well. Jones throw the short passing game real well, the vertical game real well. He threw the throw behind, uh, ball to the outside really well. And But then the other thing I think is really going to help them is his ability to extend plays, create big plays by extending plays. And off come Donovan Spencer near side. Breaks a tackle across the 30. Thought I might see, look almost like a face mask there on that run, but no flags down. And they're going to try to go real fast. Now you pick up those six, seven yards on first down, allows you to pick up the pace of your offense. Empty backfield now, five wide. They're going to have the quarterback run it. And it looks like he's going to still be short of that first down, about a yard shy as Will Jones tried to muscle his way for the yardage. A little urgency now. Third and one. And that'll get the yards they need. Spencer once again. Spencer, a guy last year, rushed for over 500 yards. Four scores. And they call him really the on-the-field leader yeah. for this team. They look to him for that leadership. He's a veteran, redshirt senior out of Charlotte. Let's see if they can continue to keep him in the mix the rest of the way. Not much happening there as he's hitting drops. You're watching the All-State Saturday kickoff. Number 22, Liberty. Trying to move to 8-0 for the first time in program history. Down to a good lead against Western Carolina here. Pass falls incomplete along the near sideline. He was looking for Daquan Patton. And it'll bring up third down. So now you're in that dangerous spot where you go quick, you're yeah. trying to get points on the board, yeah. but oh no, and now it's third long back. and you could get, be giving the ball back to Liberty with plenty of time. Yeah, they, re they really need to convert this third down. I like the play calls early in this drive. They went run, run, run for a first down. Didn't get in a panic mode, feels it. We got a score right now. They created a first down through the running game. Now they've been put themselves in this third and eight. This is a big conversion for Western Carolina right here. Three wide receivers to the left. They throw it to the right, looking for the tight end. It's picked off! Picked off by Darrell Johnson. The defensive end has some room to run. Bringing it near side, steps out of bounds. And how about the athleticism from your <laughs> D end? You think the players are happy over there? Did you see that mob? And the thing about on this play, Matt, is Jones had him. They slipped the back out of the backfield right there. Darrell Johnson was a little bit behind him. If he's able to throw that over the top to his outside shoulder, it would have put Darrell Johnson in a very difficult situation. But he's got to get a little more arc and a little deeper. But like you said, what an athletic play by a defensive end. Right, Darrell Johnson, we talk about him as a pass rusher. Six sacks coming into the game. Dropping into coverage. Yeah, you know, he played in the defensive drop. backfield That's at right. high school. That's he right. put on a lot of weight and has moved into that defensive end spot. But he shows you there, not too bad in coverage. So the Flames now with great field position. Peyton Pickett gets the carry, and he is stuffed. Pickett has not been able to get much going on the ground for the Flames today. Yeah, a little flight. surprise right there that Hugh Freeze didn't take a, take a shot on their side of the field after a turnover. Usually that's when you first down, you take a shot for a touchdown after a quick turnover. So a loss of three. Pickett will remain in there. Willis pulls it out, fires, and it's dropped. Looking I mean, for his tight end, Jerome Jackson put it right between the eights. Yeah, after that turnover and loss on first down, incomplete drop pass on second down. Western Carolina able to get a stop here on third down. This would, uh, this is a big time for them to be able to make that stop and not have any points after after a quick turnover. So third and thirteen. See if. Yeah, you got Noah Frith at the bottom here, but they're playing the safety over the top, so look for him to take a shot down the middle of the field. 
Has some time. Now he's going to try to tuck it. See if he can get some yards, get to the edge. Picked up a little block, but steps out of bounds shy of the first down. Looks like he'll be about five or six yards shy of it, but did he get enough to make it a more manageable field goal? Yeah, looks like they'll send the field goal unit on. Here comes 405 pounds of bench press. That's right, Alex Barbier. He can I throw mean. that weight around. It's going to be about a 45-yard field goal. He made one from 51 to beat Virginia Tech. Not quite the same amount of pressure here. But he'll give it a go. Snap is down. Low had the distance. What a, what a but not stop. the accuracy. What a big stop for Western Carolina. Come after a turnover like that and then be able to go one, two, three, miss field goal. That's a boost of confidence for that defense. So now their offense comes back on, still with plenty of time, Another still with shot two timeouts. So the Catamounts with another opportunity. You know, they started this ball game, and you talked about just the quick passes. The boy was getting out of yeah. Mark Wright's hand so quickly. Yeah. It's and like Wright's back in. Yeah, here you go. So he's going to get another shot. He had the first few possessions. Mark Wright back in there now. More athletic, so certainly he gives you that, that aspect because he's a dual threat guy. The give to Spencer, breaks the initial tackle, and is able to pick up about eight on first down. Let's check in once again with Emily. Javon Scruggs said that Darrell Johnson is a workhorse. Anywhere the ball is, he thinks he needs to be the one making the play. And with that mindset, it makes his job much, much easier, as you can see true on that last interception. Oh, the pitch. Boy, that was dangerous as they pitched that one wide. Calvin Jones ended up snagging it, but well, that, that was a little bit off the mark. He had to reach up and grab it. Looks like they'll be shy of what they need for that first down. So once again, third and short. Yeah, minute clock ticking, not choosing to use a timeout here. Got to get this third down conversion. Then you can look into potentially using your timeouts and not giving Liberty a chance to get the ball back. But this, they need to make a third down conversion, have something positive happen before the end of the half, be able to kick a field goal, whatever it may be. Let's see if this is where they utilize Mark Wright's athleticism. Maybe they can get him out of the pocket. See if he can pick it up with his legs. And a lot of their success is going to be, like I said, it's going to be on extended plays. Can they break down, get outside the pocket, get into the scramble drill. They called timeout 30 late. Thirty-second timeout, Western Carolina. That is their second charge of this half. So they're going to talk about it. Big play coming. Just 38 seconds left, though. And you said you pick up the first down, then you. Start taking some shots. Yeah, I hate to see him have to use the timeout right there. That leaves him with what, one timeout left? Yeah, one left. And I hate to see him wait, run the clock all the way down like that, use the timeout. But if they can pick up the first down here, could give an opportunity to get into field goal range. Yeah, Donovan Spencer, the running back, may get an opportunity here in short yardage as well. We talked about what he did last year, both running the ball and catching the ball. He had a game against VMI last year where he had 110 yards receiving. So he can. Threw it out of the backfield a little bit. You know, one of the most impressive things about Donovan Spencer as you watch him is he's small, but he runs within the tackles. He's very quick feet. He does very shifty in between the tackles as he runs. Well, he's not going to be getting the handoff, it appears. They're going empty backfields. Now they bring the tight end across the formation. Keeping it is right. Has the first down. And he'll get up just shy of the 45-yard line. Yeah, well-executed play right there on third. Try to empty it out, spread the defense out, block them well up front, able to get a double team, open up the hole. Good job, good execution. Now they got to pick up the tempo and look to get some points. Only 25 seconds left. Looking downfield, climbing the pocket. Boy, about got his head popped off there as someone had his face mask and spun him around. Is there no calling? flags? <laughs> Boy, that... How was I? World. Did I see they, that right, Joe? Yeah, it looked like that. they just about. I mean, he got his head screwed his around. head right off. Wow. Yeah, that's. How do you miss that? That's a big. I call. mean, how do you miss that? That's Elijah James that had a Time handful out. of the face mask. Lester Carolina. That is their third and final timeout. 
of this half. I mean, those fans we talked about yelling at the refs, on the they're yelling at the refs right now. Well, Mark Spear might have a few I mean, words for him wow. too. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to two seconds. So two seconds the on the game clock. With two Thank seconds you. left, but that was. Yeah, you want to talk about player Obvious. safety? That's player safety yeah. right there. Yeah. I mean, put him in the owl technique. Almost spun the house, spun the <laughs> head all the way. Right? Did you just called. come up with the yeah, owl it's technique? The owl technique. That, that's good. Try that's to good. go all the way around. Well, fortunately, Mark Wright is okay after that. We'll take a moment. Take a look at today's protection spotlight. Brought to you by Allstate. And it comes on the touchdown toss to Johnny Huntley and the protection from the offensive line, allowing Willis to sit in that pocket. Take a look at it right here, Joe. Yeah, really good job. He used the back in there, assert like a nice tight pocket. Willis is able to step up in the throw. That is the Allstate umbrella policy right there. Total protection. <laughs> Offensive line, and they're deep. They rotate a lot of guys through. Sam Gregg, offensive line coach for Liberty, feels like he's got a special group. As you take a look at Liberty now, this is the complete prevent. <laughs> That's You've got the, guys back at the 20-yard yeah. line. Nothing getting behind you, or at least it shouldn't, this in this a, defense. This might be a lot of tosses. Final play of the half, the handoff up the middle. And Spencer will be drugged down around midfield, and that will get us to the break. So Liberty will head to the half with the 28-7 lead. Malik Willis doing what he does best, putting the flames on top. When we come back, we'll kick it back to the studio. Kevin Connors, Jim Moore with you there. But first, we step aside for this timeout. You're watching the All-State Saturday kickoff. We came into the day talking about the Liberty Flames and what they've been able to accomplish this year up to number 22 in the country. So far today, living up to that billing, leading 28-7 over Western Carolina as we're about set to start the second half of play. Liberty offense led by Malik Willis has been dynamic to say the least. Take a look at the first half stats. Jumps out to you there, Joe. Yeah, you look at the, the balance by the Liberty offense, 216 yards through the air, but still rushing the ball for 102 yards. And a big part of that, obviously, is Malik Willis. Uh, you know, 14 first downs. He's looking at the time of possession was pretty even. But, uh, and then look at that bottom stat. This bottom stat, four sacks by yeah. the Liberty by the Liberty defense. And on top of that, a defensive end that got a one-handed interception yeah. on the zone yeah. drop. So the Flames will get the ball first to start the second half. Liberty trying to go to 8-0 on the season. All leading up to next week's showdown with NC State. We'll get in to that matchup a little bit more as we move forward in the second half. Our Emily Austin caught up with the two coaches. We'll hear from her in just a bit to see what they had to say at the break. You know, Matt, one of the most explosive kickoff return guys in the country is Shedra Lewis. He just hasn't had a lot of chance to do it this year, but if he gets a ball in his hands, he is capable of going the distance every time he touches it. He's standing at the goal line, waiting for this one. Axon Robertson to kick it away. And he's going to get his chance. Slight bobble at the outset, but here comes Shedro coming near side. Look out, he's got some room across the 40 to midfield and couldn't quite keep his feet in bounds as he steps out in Western Carolina territory. Called it, Joe. Yeah, you give you give Shedro Lewis a crease. He's going. Check in with Emily Austin. Matt, I caught up with both coaches on Liberty side. Head coach Hugh Freeze said, we need to wake up. It looks like we're sleepwalking out there and just going through the motions. And he also said, we have to execute within this system offensively. If you knew how many things we've messed up, you know why I feel this way. Fortunately, we're up 28 to 7. On the other side, Western Carolina needs to sustain drives. They can't have negative drives, and we got to take the ball away from one of the best quarterbacks in the country. But coach did say that he does feel a little positive about how, how his team has played and that they've play, he's played, they have played better than he thought. Well, and they said, we're going to use this to shuffle a lot of yep. players through. It's kind of like a spring ball situation, these three games in the fall for Western Carolina, as their defense does a great job standing up Josh Mack there for a loss. 
So yeah, you, you want to win certainly, but they also realize, listen, Liberty's played seven games. Yeah, there's, they're playing. They're playing very well. They're playing hard. They're competing. Yeah. Love the interior, just like that play right there. Love the interior competitiveness on their defensive line. Malik Willis going to sling it. Catch made by Johnny Huntley. It'll be about five yards shy of what they need for first down yardage. You know, you look at plays like that. And I'd say, it's like, I agree with me. You, you want to play sound. You want to play fundamental. But I would love to see Western Carolina, when you get those quick speed outs, one guy just try to take a chance, jump underneath that thing, create a turnover, make a play that could, could give them that spark. Three wide receivers, now four as they motion Mack out of the backfield to the near side. Malik steps up, look out, nobody in front of him, 20, 10, see you later. Malik Willis, 43 yards to the house. That's just a well-designed football play. You'll see right here, what you want to be able to do is go empty, spread the defense. They try to bring a five-man pressure. Once there's no linebacker play there, so once they're able to create that crease, Malik Willis is going, and there's no catching him. Just a well-designed football play by Hugh Freeze and his offense. So much depth, so much explosiveness for this Liberty offense. You just can't take it all away. Malik Willis now with 1,000 rushing yards. It feels like this season, but no, that's in his career, <laughs> including his time at Auburn. As and he, he didn't play a lot at Auburn. And he didn't. He crosses the 1,000-yard mark. Willis up to 97 yards on the ground today as he is over 300 yards of total offense. Have his total for the season right now at Liberty. Do we know what that is now? You're going to make me do some quick uh, math do some quick uh, on the air, but it looks like he is at uh, 700 even, actually. That, that, wow. math, that math wasn't too hard when you get those yeah. nice round numbers. Nice that makes round, it easy. Nice yeah, and even, even right easier. set, put zeros on there. Total touchdown today. Now two through the air, two I mean, on the ground. It's just so it's it's so beautiful to watch when you have a, a guy as athletic as Malik Willis, and then you have a coach like Hugh Freeze able to design the offense around him. That was a perfect example using motion to to go to bring Josh Mack out of the backfield and split him out wide, get those people outside the box, and then open up that lane for Malik Willis to run. Well designed, well executed. Barbier kicks it away. Western Carolina trying to get a good return of their own. They'll get it out close to the 30-yard line. Yeah, did you see who was in the thick of that right there? Ah. Who was it? Barbier came Barbier. in. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> he, he, he came in headhunting right there. I know you people have said, well, boy, he struggles to get into the end zone at times this yeah. year. But I think he also likes getting yeah. it on the tackle. I think he might do it on purpose sometimes. You know, the first one he kicked eight yards deep in the end zone. Now he lets him return that thing, and he's coming in there at 100 miles an hour trying to get them, them guns connected <laughs> on a hit. He, he is a big dude. So Western Carolina running Will Jones back out there at quarterback. He and Mark Wright split time in the first half. Jones with a handoff to Spencer up the middle. Short pickup. More on Western Carolina. We check in once again with Emily. Matt, you'll see a logo on Western Carolina's helmets, TNP. It stands for the next play. Coach was saying that it's about the next play, and that's what COVID has been about, too. Uh, offensive coordinator John Holt said that we're still competing for jobs, so these guys better be playing the next play. Keeper, some room to run. Now cutting it back. Jones across midfield. Still on his feet. Now will slide out of bounds. Pushed out by Treadwell is a nice pickup. Not yeah. the athlete that Mark Wright is, but athletic enough to make something happen with his feet. That was a really well-designed play. What they try to do is they try to give a bubble screen look to the outside where Jones is going to throw that screen, which then made the linebacker expand out towards that bubble screen, which then opened up the lane and got him to cut back once he was able to get through the line of scrimmage. Well, well designed. He's going to look to sling it out to his tight end. Cuts it up. Nice pickup on first down. We've seen the tight end Kosinki heavily involved. Yeah. His fourth catch on the day, over 50 yards receiving. He's a guy two years ago in 2018, 
he had eight touchdown wraps. He was a third-team All-American. Last year put up similar numbers yardage-wise, about 250, but only two touchdown receptions. Near side, caught, and they're saying he was down where the contact initially happened. That was Calvin Jones on the reception. Freshman out of Forest Creek, North Carolina. Well, that was a really nice tackle in the open field. You know, when you get into these games, in the modern day game where they try to stretch the field horizontally and make you tackle their athletes in space, defensive backs that are able to tackle in space are the ones that are going to play. And that was a really nice tackle in open space. Brings up third and six. You got the man coverage down below on the bottom here. They like that back shoulder fade earlier. So pull it out under pressure. Trace John Clark, he gets the pass away. His receiver was blocking on the far side. And somehow, he had the arm strength to get it out there. And at the same time, fortunate that it wasn't intercepted. I mean, that was a good job by Jones, just to be able to get the ball, get the ball, rid of the ball, put him into a fourth and five. I'm a little surprised we're looking at a long field goal right here. At this yard, this position on the field, I'm surprised that Western Carolina is not trying to go for it. 49-yard field goal, would you run a fake here, Joe? <laughs> Fourth down. We saw them attempt a, a one near 50 earlier in the ball game. It was not close. Richard McCollum in. Good snap. It's down. Kick is away, and it's going to be short. On line, but yeah. short as it bounced in the back of the end zone. Yeah, once again, they had that same sort of similar situation in the first half and didn't go for it, and even in that one had a fourth and four, fourth and five, and would have liked to see him get the opportunity to get a first down, have a chance to score a touchdown. Move the ball, come up empty. Flames lead at 35-7. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. We made USAA insurance for veterans like Martin. When a hailstorm hit, he needed his insurance to get it done right, right away. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. First half of action here in Lynchburg, Virginia. Out involved with number seven in blue. He comes out slinging it here to Demario Douglas, who's wrapped up for a loss, but a flag is down on the play. So get a holding call. Oh, face mask maybe. Personal foul, face mask, 15 offense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line. First down. I guess they did this, have a face mask call to make up for. Him. Yeah, sure, it was Chris a face Barrett. mask. Call. Yeah, that that the one at the end of the, the first half was a brutal miss on the face mask. But that'll back the flames up as you get a look at Hugh Freeze. Classic coach answer. We heard our Emily Austin say he was not pleased at the half. You know, your offense has done some nice things. You're up 28-7. As you get a look there, Barrett getting up into the face mask of Curtis Roach. But Freeze is a perfectionist when it comes to his offense. Yeah. And even after some of the yeah. great games Malik Willis has had this year, first thing in, po in the post-game press conference, he'll say, well, you know, he missed a few reads. <laughs> it's like, well, he, he had seven touchdowns, you know. He is a perfectionist yards. when it comes to his offense and how it should be run. Willis standing in the pocket, going to let it go deep down the field. That's Kevin Shaw, snags it, reaches out and grabs it. It's a foot race, and he's gone. Kevin Shaw on the connection from Malik Willis. Oh, my. 84 yards! I mean, Keith threw that thing. Out there where Kevin Shaw had to go after that full speed, reach out into a perfect position. Look at that pocket. And he's got a guy up in his face. And to be able to catch that thing that's as far as you can throw it, reach your hands out at the last second, and then it's just speed on speed all the way to the end zone. Well executed play. Well, Shaw had a reception on a deep ball earlier in the game, but that, yeah, you could not have placed it any better. Did not have to break stride whatsoever. 
The extra point up and through from Barbier. And one play, the Flames find the end zone. You talk about explosive. Number seven is explosive for the Flames. That time doing it with his arm. It's all liberty here today. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. We made USAA insurance for this season. When being a fan on a budget gets tough, our agents do the legwork so saving on auto insurance is easy. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. The Vikings have won two straight. The five and three Bears try to stay within striking distance of the Packers in the NFC North. They square off at Soldier Field in our Week 10 Monday Night Football matchup. Eight Eastern, five Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 o'clock. And that Chicago defense, good luck slowing down Dalvin Cook. That guy has been on fire. He's tough lately. He is. Can I give you a little trip? I'm mean, not tripping. I just pulled something I wanted to. I'm sure. I mean, they're just yeah, looking at the Vikings numbers. Yeah. The Vikings are my team. They're your team? They're my team. You know why the Vikings are why? my team? Why? Because my dad played professional football in the CFL and for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And guess who his coach was? Who's that? Bud Grant. Oh, really? Legendary. Yes, legendary Vikings. Bud Grant yeah. of Minnesota. So we all, so I grew up being a huge Minnesota Vikings fan. Short kick taken just inside the 30. Well, we talk about Malik Willis. <laughs> you and I kind of talking before that drive, that last, if you call it a drive, it was one play. Say, you know, boy, at what point in the game, if it starts getting out of hand, do you take him out? You're probably getting pretty close to that <laughs> point now, aren't there's you? 42 7. 42 7. There's almost 11 minutes left in the third quarter. I was thinking, hey, let's play him through the end of the third quarter if you're Hugh Freeze. Uh, uh, but at this point, you know, with 400 yards of total offense, yeah, you might see him. Leave the game here pretty quickly. Kai Stanley in the backfield, along with Will Jones. They're going to give it to him. Not much happening as he is hit and dropped right there at the line of scrimmage. It'll be interesting, too, here in the second half in talking with Catamount offensive coordinator John Holt. He said, you know, we're, we're not in football shape. We've been practicing and doing things since August. But Liberty is in football right. shape. It's different. And so now you get into the second half, do you, does that, you start wearing out a little bit, does fatigue start becoming an issue? Because these guys haven't played yet this year. Yeah, that the grind of going through seven games and becoming in football shape is a very good point. But as, as Coach Spears said, what's on their helmet, as, as Emily had said, the next play. You have to play all the way in the game and play the next play every single down. That incomplete. Jimmy Falks in coverage, knocking it away. Yeah, amazingly, we talk about this being Western Carolina's first game of the season. They have not played in 357 days. Their last game was against Alabama November 23rd of last year. That is insane. And that's not a great memory. Well, him. that's probably not one you, yeah, you want to think back fondly on if you're a Catamount fan either. But, oh. but yeah, to go that long, they're keep, just happy to be. They're happy to be on the field right now. Keep getting better. Keep, keep getting, getting better. better. Third and long. Pressure comes. Able to slip out of it. Looking downfield. Firing a little too tall for his intended receiver, Daquan Patton. So they'll bring up fourth down, and the punting unit is coming on for the Catamounts. You've seen both quarterbacks, Joe. Will Jones, Mark Wright. As either one kind of stood out to you, if you're if you're sitting there right now and you're Mark Spear, you're taking all that you've seen into account. Which one have you seen more yeah, from today? I mean, they've both they've both done some good things. Uh, Will Jones, when he came out after you know right early in the game, led them down for a score, made two good throws, the vertical seam and the back shoulder fade, stayed alive, had the touchdown throw. Uh, so, but Rick at the same time has done some good things in the run game. Uh, so they're, they're, they'll figure it out. They're still getting there, but they, they have two good quarterbacks. Mario Douglas on the return. Spun around, finally got into the ground there around the 29-yard line. 
All right, well, this gives us a moment for our AT&T 5G best moment from today. Joe, we're going to leave this in your hands. Your best moment is what? I'll tell you, this long, deep post right here is able to come across to Kevin Shaw. The protection that Malik Willis got, and Kevin Shaw gives a little stick to the outside, and then what he does very well, as good receivers do, do not, when the ball's thrown in the air, do not run with your hands out. You wait as long as you possibly can to lift, lift, let those hands reach out to grab that ball, and he did a really good job of that. Beautiful play and beautiful execution by the Liberty offense. And it would appear that Malik Willis's day is done as he has a seat. Chris Ferguson in the ball game. Hands off to Shedro Lewis. Shedro shoots through, accelerates across midfield as a couple of flags rain in. Best run of the day for Shedro Lewis. You give Shedro Lewis a crease. He is dangerous and saw in that Syracuse game early in the season where he had quite a Here's game. Here's the run holding offense number 19. Ten yard penalty, first down. That's Brody Brum flagged for the hole. We'll get an extended look now at Chris Ferguson. Remember, he got a start yeah. earlier this year against North Alabama. He's a kid that has had a lot of success in his career at Maine, transferred to Liberty prior to this season. Led the Black Bears to the FCS semifinals back in 2018. So he'll get some extended playing time now here in the second half. Once again, a handoff. Central Lewis takes a big shot at the end of that one. That was Darius Smith lowering the shoulder into him. Yeah, Chris Ferguson has put up some really good stats throughout his career. And, you know, you look, before we really knew what Malik Willis right. kind of player he was, they talked about in camp how Chris Ferguson is really pushing Malik Willis. It wasn't clear-cut number one player at the quarterback position. So he, he's putting up stats and at the FCS level and uh, is a solid backup for Liberty. A true pocket passer. He's not... The dual threat guy, Malik is, tries to swing it out to Peyton Pickett. A little sloppy with the footwork there, and sailed it over his head. As a quarterback like Ferguson, you almost have to slow yourself down a little bit, don't you? When you get out there after you've been sitting behind a guy yeah. for so long, you're so amped, you finally get your chance, you kind of, I imagine, heart's pumping a little extra, yeah. than, you know, faster than it would be otherwise. Yeah, but he, he's done a good job. He's been there before. That's what's good about when you get a transfer kid with so much experience. They've been there before, and he's used to these bullets firing. So third and seven. Pick up the blitz. Drops it in there. Demario Douglas for the first down. Good touch on that ball, and Douglas able to look it into his hands. Yeah, good concept of a play right there. you got a cover two look. He's able to run on the outside receiver. He's able to run the run them off, get that safety off the hash, and then brought in the inside guy in a little bend route and be able to, Chris was able to just sort of feather the ball into the honey hole right there. Nice play. Peyton Pickett remains in, uh, running back for Liberty. Good pass. That one caught for a short game. That ball come out at the end. Well, Western Carolina players acting like it. They're all pointing as if they've recovered it. No official word yet. Got it. And they got it. So that reception of the tight end Trevor Hobbs, his second of the day, but he was unable to the hang on to it. The rolling on the field was a fumble and recovered by Western Carolina. First down. Yep. Yeah, good job punching the football right there and knocking that thing out. Looked like that was Willie Hampton that got in there and ripped it yeah. away. Willie Hampton's made some nice plays today. You are watching the All-State Saturday kickoff. Liberty Flames number 22 in the country. Trying to continue their climb in the polls. So far so good today is Mark Wright back in at quarterback. Hand off, short pickup. Donovan Spencer on the carry. He gets about two, maybe three. Yeah, I like how Coach Spears both using Jones and Wright at the quarterback position, and he's rotating them in throughout the game. Because like I said, they're, they're trying to find their way right now, find their sea legs, find who can put some drives together. And both these guys are very capable. So it's good to see the constant rotation to be able to keep them engaged in the game. Right, rolling out, throws towards the sideline, a little too tall for his intended target. He'll bring up third down. 
Wright started this game with a really nice drive. Yeah. He was in rhythm, moved the ball down to Flames territory, ended up kicking a long field goal that missed. But he looked sharp early, 7 of 10 throwing the football today, but for just 40 yards, so a lot of that real short you, stuff. You know how, you know, early in the, when Coach, when Coach Pierce said, hey, I've had 58 different schedules right. that I've had to do, you know, he's drawn up 58 different first 10 plays. You know, you have the first 10 plays yeah. your offense is going to run. He's gone every which way all the time to do it 100 different ways. I don't know if he's done more schedules or more first 10 plays. Swing it out. The catch made across midfield. Coming near side. Wrapped up. Knocked out of bounds on the reception. That was Dylan Abernathy. Freshman wide receiver. So a nice play design there. Allows them to move the sticks. Keep the drive alive. And that's what they need to do. Get gain some of these third down conversions so you can get more plays and move the sticks, get into the red zone, work on your offense. Run coming near side, taking the initial contact, bouncing off, sticking his nose in there again was Donovan Spencer. I'll tell you, Matt, one of the things that was a little bit surprising is you know, being West, Western Carolina's first game of the season is they've only had one turnover. Usually in these games early in the season, that's when you're going to see more interceptions, more fumbles. The actual, they haven't had the live bullets coming at them in a long time, and, and they've only had one turnover. So that's definitely something positive to build on. Right. Hands it off. Some room to run. Spencer accelerating through the hole, and he's taken down at around the 30. So a nice run, another first down. As Spencer now up over 60 yards on the day. More on Donovan Spencer. Let's check in with Emily. Guys, this Western Carolina coaching staff speaks so highly of Donovan Spencer and his leadership on this football team on and off the field. But he's also done, done so much on campus leading a We Want Change march that was organized by Spencer. It's playing, the we is spelled W-H-E-E. -E playing off of Cullowee, where the university is located. The community response was unbelievable as Spencer led the march and been a voice for social equality. It's been so great to have him on the field leading this team, like I said, on and off the field. Yeah, really well-rounded young man. The last two years he's been named to the SOCON Academic Honor Roll. So you talk about, you know, he's a dangerous playmaker on the field. He's much more than that off the field. Great young man. Second and six, they fake it to him. Wright looking to throw back to him now. He's got him, the catch is made. It'll be enough for a first down. Good tackle out there. As he, I believe that was Marcus Haskins that came up to make the tackle. As they threw it back to their running back. There's a look at that march for change that Emily talked about a little bit ago. It was organized by Donovan Spencer. We are really proud of this young man and all that he represents for his program. Now they're in the red zone, knocking on the door. Spencer spinning his way down inside the 10. Well, it hasn't looked like there's been a lot of real big running lanes there, and yet he finds a way to kind of shimmy his way through. I noticed that early in the, early in the game with Spencer, how he was able to use his, he has very quick feet, and able to use his feet in tight spaces within a hole. And then I like, run like that where he gets to the point, and now he just drives forward. And, and what good running backs do is they always fall forward. You want to fall forward for that extra yard, extra two. You never want to go backwards, get driven backwards. 70 yards now on the ground for Spencer on 10 carries. Right, firing towards the end zone, and a flag comes in. That was Jimmy Falks over there just shoving a receiver out of bounds. <laughs> he almost shoved him into the official. Yeah. Shoved the cone over over there, and the fish almost took one. I don't think Jimmy's arguing this one. Defensive pass interference number eight. That is an automatic first down. That it is. Here's a look. Yeah, they try to run a little bubble fake right there. He's going to stock and then go on the block. Keenan Hambrick yeah. was the receiver. So now they're on the two-yard line. Let's see if they don't give it to Spencer and let him finish this thing off. Yeah, these are important reps right now for us. A false start penalty, but important reps in the red zone for both sides. You're always trying to work hard on your red zone defense. False start. Offense number 61. Five-yard penalty. First out. 
and for Western Carolina, the red zone offense. They haven't had an opportunity to get here too often, so these are the reps you need in order to get on film, correct, and get better. See that little note they're making right there? Yep. That's not like a star, like, good job. That's <laughs> one of those, like, going to bring this up later. You're on yeah. the two-yard line and you get a false start. Those are those penalties are that, <laughs> in a close game, exactly. are crucial. Exactly. Spencer remains in the backfield, standing next to right. He was looking for him, throws it up and overshot him. They were trying to get him coming out of the backfield. We told you he's a good receiver, but well covered that time. Yeah, basically trying to work the same play right there. Had a slant on the outside, clear the corner out, get Spencer out of the backfield. That's one of those where you just sort of throw the ball at the, at the pylon right there and let him go down and be the only one who can catch it. Second goal. Give it to Spencer. He gets him back down to about where they were before the false start. Bring up third and goal from about the two and a half yard line. All right, I like this down right here, Matt. Third and two from the two. Coach Spear right now, you're looking at this. This is a great red zone rep. You want to be able to get in the end zone. You got a few options here, like the back shoulder fade. They've always liked the back shoulder fade down to the bottom into the short side of the field, or with the athleticism of Rick being able to boot, get him out on the corner, and then work that back end of the end zone. Quarterback keeps it. Did he Got get it. in? He did. So you saw Mark well, Wright just follow Donovan Spencer right through the hole, and he gets in. That wasn't as exciting as I wanted. And you, you but it's a touchdown. Yeah, you really I mean, kind of a lot of things going you through right there. Yourself I was scheme myself. I right think there. in that situation. Yeah, I was I was coach over coach right there. But yeah, good. but nice, good follow, good follow through with the quarterback, be able to get in the end zone. Great reps, great reps, great job getting the end zone. These are the things. Hey, the next play, just like Coach Spear says, the next play, they they can build off of this. Good looking drive, led by Mark Wright, the extra point. Now up and through. So second touchdown of the day for the Catamounts as they look to build on the future. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. How about new? No. no. Come on, no. 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 Only Discover has no annual fee on any card. Off their big double overtime win against Clemson. We'll have the second ranked Fighting Irish in Boston College today. That's at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. And at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, number 13 Wisconsin and Michigan at the Big House in Ann Arbor. Both games on ABC and the ESPN app. Michigan has had some success here at home lately. Won 13 of their last 15. But they have struggled against the pass, is what I am being told by my stats gurus, allowing almost 300 yards a game passing yards. We're still, I have not seen if Graham Mertz is gonna play tonight for Wisconsin or not. You know, that's been kind of a point of discussion today. If he does, he may have himself a heyday. Kick brought out to about the 16, maybe the 17 before it stood up and dropped. Looks like that was Dwayne Crawford on the kickoff return. So the Flames using this opportunity to get some other guys in there. You know what I like about Wisconsin, Matt? What's that? The cheese? I mean, well, you're close. It's close. America's it, Dairyland. It is. and and. and they like to cheese. I like how the Badgers play football. But you know what? You know why they play football? Part of the reason why they play football so well? Why? They like the brats. Oh, the brats in Wisconsin are unbelievable. Good, good tailgating. Yeah, my brother lives in Wisconsin. Under, like, I mean, it's like the, the tailgating yeah. and, and the brats that they make. Woo! You better keep your shoes on because they'll knock your socks off. Chris Ferguson, handoff. That's Josh Mack getting out close to the 25. 
Mack on the day, over 50 yards on the ground. You should mention, you see the, the Liberty logos for the Flames. This is Military Appreciation Day, Veterans Day being this past week. The Flames do a good job each year of honoring those who have served this great country. Today, breaking out the alternate logos on the helmet. Yeah, right back to Mack. Slipped as he tried to plant that foot and cut it up. He'll still be about a yard and a half shy of the first down. You know, when you're in Liberty Williams Stadium, a military appreciation day, when it's a full house and they get the fireworks going, the band's playing and they're singing the Lee Greenwood song, it's, it's, it's really nice. They do a really, really good job with that here. Two minutes left here in the third quarter. Third down for Liberty. Handoff trying to outrun that defense. He does. Josh Mack cuts it up. And he's shy of the 40-yard line. That was an opportunity where if you're Western Carolina, you got to stop there and get the ball back. Not that the game is necessarily hanging in doubt, yeah. but you, you start to have some opportunities where if you're Hugh Freeze, the last thing a coach ever wants to do is go, did I pull my guys too soon? Right, exactly. You never want to have exactly. to put them back in there. So that, in some ways, a big third down conversion for the Flames just to keep the clock moving and keep this ball game heading in the right direction. And the little subtle things on a call like that. On the third and two, you're expecting to get an inside zone play. And right there, Liberty ran an outside zone stretch to be able to get the edge, which uh, Western Carolina was protecting to, to be able to defend an inside zone play. So good call by, by Liberty. Run it again. Mack with the spin move. Stumbled a bit. Gets maybe one. Remember, Ferguson and Mack played together. Yeah, they did. Maine. So these yeah. are guys that know each other well. Earlier this season when Ferguson came into a ball game, they said they kind of joked with each other, like, here we are again. Yeah, you know? like old days. That's right. Yeah. So they had a lot of success there. Both ended up transferring from Maine to Liberty. I mean, Mack led the FCS in rushing that one year, correct? Yeah, rushes, uh, I think it was rush yards per game. Uh, he was an FCS All-American. Yeah, he, had a, he was great there for the Black Bears and has been really good for the Flames as well. Six career 100-yard games at LU in a year and a half. Pressure, Ferguson stands in there, delivers a strike to Demario Douglas, somehow keeps his feet. Showed every bit of wiggle he had <laughs> yeah. and not able to get much after the you'll, catch. You'll like this. You'll like this, man. Look down on the field right now, and we we're just talking about Chris Ferguson yeah. and Mack together. Well, they brought a corner blitz on that play, and Josh Mack had to slide across the formation and pick up that blitz, and he did a really good job because if he didn't, Ferguson would have got a hit dead in the mouth, and after it was over, he went over his old pa pal and patted him on the That's chest right. and said, yeah. thanks, buddy. Yep. Glad we've been around together for a while. <laughs> That'll get us to the end of the third quarter. Liberty in control here on top, 42-14. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. Who is USAA made for? It's made for him, a veteran who honorably served. And it's made for her. She's serving now. We also made USAA for military spouses and their kids. Become a member. Get an insurance quote today. Liberty Flames one quarter away from moving to 8 and 0 on the season. Now time for our Fansville College Football Update brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Number 15 Coastal Carolina. They're supposed to be playing at Troy. It was postponed. Today's game moved to December 12th because of some positive COVID-19 tests. Also interesting to note, no ranked matchups today. Wow. First week in November since 2009. Now, that's partially due to all the games yeah. that were postponed and canceled and such. But we mentioned Coastal Carolina there. Why Why do well, we mention the shots of clears as Liberty just takes one to the house? Someone <laughs> didn't give them the heads up. And we're in the middle yeah. of the Fansville College yeah. football update. Dr. Pepper. DJ Daniels says, Dr. Pepper. I don't care. Yeah. I'm taking it to the end zone. I say give that man a Dr. Pepper. Give him a, all 23 flavors <laughs> of bubbly deliciousness. C.J. Daniels <laughs> with his second touchdown of the game. Let's see what happened here. Chris Ferguson yeah. slinging route. it, and Daniels does the rest. So two scores for the true freshman. What a season this young man is having. They call him Sticky because of the great hands you he's love shown. That name, I do like Sticky. that. It's a good nickname. And he's able to take it 
the distance. Also now, Jason Stricker in for the extra point. Did not put it through. So the Flames on the board again. We'll tell you more about Fansville. Dr. Maybe we'll have Pepper. time on the other side. Yeah. We'll get back to it. Come on. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. We made USAA insurance for this season. When being a fan on a budget gets tough, our agents do the legwork so saving on auto insurance is easy. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. All right, I was making a flawless transition from the fans' <laughs> bill add to this. The remaining games for Liberty this year, you take a look at what's left on their schedule. You also take a look at the FPI win percentage for Liberty. So heavy favorites against UMass, that's the day after Thanksgiving. But next week at NC State, and then the final game of the year, an old rival wow. from the Big South days, yep. Coastal Carolina, who's ranked 15th right now. So a couple of... Big opportunities for the Flames. Listen, they've already, you know, kind of gone into that national conversation with what they've done this year. You know, you're in the top 25, you're there. But you have a chance with those two games left on the schedule to really yes. have not just a, what's been a special season. You start, I mean, what do you think? You win those, you're a top 15 team. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's like, this is 2020. Anything now, You went to about 2020. If the Flames get past NC State, which I was a little surprised to see on the statistic that they have a higher percentage chance of winning versus NC State than they do against, I was, yeah, I was surprised by against, that well. against Coastal Carolina. But if they get past NC State, UMass, could you think the start of the season it would be – Two unbeatens? Two unbeatens. Coastal ranked ahead of Liberty. Can we put in an early call to get game day to go Can to that we get, one? Let's get a game day there. Go to the Come beach. Come on, Herbie, just show up. <laughs> exactly. Get some beach time in. And off on first down. That's Spencer again up to the 30-yard line. Western Carolina. Talk about the rest of their schedule. They're at Eastern Kentucky next week. Then they've got a couple of weeks off before they finish up their the fall portion of their schedule at North Carolina in December. Quarterback right keeps it. He'll have enough for a first down. Yeah, there's a lot of really positive things for Western Carolina to take away from this game. They've, they've done some good things in the passing game, the rotating of the quarterbacks, trying to find the rhythm uh, between the two of them, being able to score within the red zone both time, a couple times when they got down there. So for Coach Spear, there is a ton of positives to build on. The one thing they really haven't done effectively today is you haven't seen him connect taking a shot down the field. Right, so right. much in the passing game has been that, that short passing game. And Liberty's done a good job of taking away uh, many of those vertical routes that you talked about yeah. early on. Yeah, it's not that they haven't tried. They've had a hard time in pass protection to be able to give them the time to get downfield to be able to take those shots. Tried to fit one in there to Calvin Jones, was unable to flag it down. This is also a group of young playmakers on the outside. We're we talking about Stribling, redshirt freshman, Quillen freshman, yeah. Calvin Jones freshman. Keenan Hamburg we saw earlier, he's a freshman. That's where they have a lot of new faces, a lot of young guys. Remember, this is a team that does not have a lot of veterans. Only nine total seniors on this roster. So they're just going to keep getting better. No doubt about it. Out, picked oh. off. Intercepted. Is that Carl Poole? That is Carl Poole. Young man who earned a scholarship right before the season. He's stepping right there in the passing lane. Get out of Danville, Virginia. Makes the interception and claims force their second turnover in this ballgame. See, that right there is technique on how to play the RPO game as a linebacker. What he did is he took one step in to make sure that the run wasn't there, that he didn't hand, hand the ball up. The second he saw the quarterback pull the ball away, he then turned his shoulders and got squared back into that slant passing lane. Textbook play by Poole to make that interception. 
You're watching the All-State Saturday kickoff. Poole also has a twin brother on the team. So Carl, you just saw Carlos, his twin brother is a wide receiver. Jonathan Bennett now in at quarterback. Peyton Pickett just may have coughed up the football at the end of that run. It looks like the Flames will keep it as Pickett picks up just a yard. So Jonathan Bennett. Hey, good to see Jonathan Bennett in the game. Red shirt freshman quarterback out of South Carolina. Hands it off, Pickett now with some room to run. Across the 20, can he take it all the way? Yes, he can. Peyton Pickett gets loose, and this Liberty offense is pouring it on. You know, we talked earlier in the season about how Peyton Pickett was really a short yardage back that had a nose to the end zone, scoring a lot of touchdowns. But in this offseason, he really improved his speed. And you can see it right there. He's always been a patient runner. But right there, to be able to get through that gap, split it right there, and take that thing all the way to the house, he's become a much faster football player this season. Stricker in once again. Missed the last, last extra point. We'll get another crack at it here. That is up and through. And the Flames have hung 55 on the scoreboard. Still 12.49 to go in the game. Everybody in blue making an impact on the offensive side today. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. How about new? No. Uh-uh, no way. Come on, no. 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 Only Discover has no annual fee on any card. The All-State Saturday Kickoff is presented by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. Beautiful shot, Blue Ridge Mountains. Let's look at Williams Stadium here in Lynchburg, Virginia. Liberty leads Western Carolina 55-14. Taking a look at some other scores around the country. How about Virginia Tech? Liberty knocked them off a week ago. And now here they are, fourth quarter, leading number nine, Miami. So that's an interesting one to follow. Indiana keeps right on rolling. How about Indiana? Indiana they're up to that number 10 ranking. Four, Mar zero over Michigan yeah. State. Wow. Marshall's been sneaky good this year. Also Louisiana sitting there with the lead. It's a long way to go in that ball game. You know, I saw the line on the Virginia Tech Miami game where Virginia Tech was favored in that game. Yeah. And was like, what in the world? Liberty just beat Virginia Tech, and now Virginia Tech's favored over Miami. Like, what in the world is that? But I guess the guys at Vegas right now know what they're talking about. Well, I know we saw it last week when we watched the tape of that game with Liberty. Hendon Hooker is an incredible oh. athlete at quarterback for Virginia he, Tech. He is a load to bring down. When you have somebody like that, you have a shot to upset anybody you play. I'm gonna tell you what, Barbera's pipes are looking extra swole today. He must have He got really, a lot, you know, he got yeah. a lot of attention after that yeah, 51 doing, yard goal. The curls. And a lot yeah. of people were asking him, so like, you know, how much do you lift? What do you bench? <laughs> do you, you know, lift? the kind of what questions you, you get yeah. around. You get I around get that town, a lot, right? Yeah. How much I squat. Right. Yeah. 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 Well when he was just a student here at Liberty, after transferring from Penn State, not playing, he said he really got into bodybuilding. And you can see that. <laughs> As there's a whistle, a flag <laughs> on the field. It's not something that's hidden. He lets you know. He doesn't. False start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. First down. Doesn't he curl the uh, pipe? He does. He curls in the locker room before the yeah, game. Yeah, that's pipe. right. All right, hey, let's check in with Emily. With Emily. Yeah, what what do you stuff. bench, Emily? <laughs> um, you know, I actually haven't been benching lately, so I don't have those <laughs> okay, stats for right. you right now. But I don't, I'm sure I can't pick up that pipe that he <laughs> curls before the games. But you guys were just talking about Liberty's success and that big stunning win over Virginia Tech. Coach Free surprisingly said that ranks at the top of his list of accomplishments at coaching. The emotions were the same at beat, as beating Al Alabama with Ole Miss, but the recruiting level and differences between the pro two programs really shine. And he joked that everyone's going to think we're going to just beat every ACC team that we play. And I go, yep. Yeah, you, you raise the expectations. You know, yeah. right? that's the dangerous game. Obviously, you love it as a coach. You love people getting excited. But yeah, now you're yeah. going to NC State next week and everybody's like, well, you, on, baby, you beat win. Virginia Tech. Let's What's go. going on? Like, you got to go. But that is impressive. For a guy that beat Nick Saban twice at Ole Miss and had a lot of big wins there, he 
He said last week's victory over Virginia Tech, the biggest win of his coaching career. Toss coming near side. Flames trying to string it out, and they do. That was Luke Sutton, the freshman wide receiver, taking that. And it'll bring up third down. Both teams getting to play a lot of guys in the fourth quarter. These are valuable reps to be able to get them on film. Some of these guys, you know, at, when I was at UNC, Coach Brown used to say, some of you guys go back to the dorm rooms and your apartments and you have many meetings. I'm talking about how can you're not getting any playing time. Well, now's your opportunity to get that playing time and be able to see it on film and, and make an impact in the game. Third 13, flush from the pocket. Now he's just gonna tuck it right, tripped up and tackled at the 30 yard line. Taken down by Cade Robinson, redshirt freshman safety, coming up to make the tackle. And there is a flag in the backfield. Offensive holding, number 62. That penalty is declined, fourth down. And so the punting unit comes on for Western Carolina. You know, the one area Western Carolina really needs to shore up where they've sort of shot themselves in the foot is in pass protection. They've done a decent job within the run game, being able to open up a few creases. But in pass protection, especially when they're trying to get into their vertical game, they haven't been able to protect the quarterback to be able to take those shots downfield. Mario Douglas waits for the punt. He's not going to have a chance to catch that. Hugh Freeze might. That one landed. Actually, Alex Barbier made an attempt to catch that one. That one landed on the Flames bench. <laughs> So a shank will give the Flames great field position when we come back. Liberty leading it, 55-14, 10.46 to go. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. We made USAA insurance for veterans like Martin. When a hailstorm hit, he needed his insurance to get it done right, right away. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. USAA. All right, here's the lineup for tonight, fresh off their big double overtime win. Then number one, Clemson, second ranked Notre Dame. Knocked them off, they take on BC, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC. Then 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN. Here we go, Terrence Crawford defending his WBO welterweight belt against Kel Brook in Las Vegas. That's a look at the lineup on ESPN, ABC, and the ESPN app. Now, Brook looking for his first win in the welterweight division since 2016. But Crawford, 36-0, and Joe, 14-0 yeah. in world title fights with 11 knockouts. You're not getting this from Teddy Atlas. You're only getting this right no here. Doubt, no doubt. And I've seen Crawford fight, and that guy will knock your face off. There you go. There's your analysis. What more do you need? <laughs> Get you all ready for Go that straight one. Straight to the point. Yeah. Handoff. That's Troy Henderson just checked in the ball game. Little guy, but running hard. Picks up nine, maybe just shy of the first down marker. So the Flames getting all their running backs. There's stable of backs involved in this one. Yeah, and they do have a stable of backs. When you start going down the list of Josh Mack, Peyton Pickett, Shedra Lewis, I mean, these guys, and then Josh Henderson, you know, they had high hopes, Josh Henderson, that he would get plenty of reps and, and plenty of yards this year, especially in the receiving game. And yeah. he's barely had a chance to even get on the field. Yeah, coaches like him a lot. Every yeah, time you talk uh, to Liberty coaches about their running backs, they always bring up Troy Henderson. Say, just, we just, it's hard to get him on the field. We have so much talent there right now. So he got eight on first down. They give it to him again. And he looks to be close to that first down. See if he gets the spot he needed, and he does. So that will move the chains. Yeah, it would be good to see Troy Henderson get lots of carries here down the stretch. What did I call him? I called him Josh. Oh, you called him Josh? Okay, good. I want to make sure. No, no, that one on you. That was on me. All right. Yeah, Troy, he, he was involved last year quite a bit in the passing game, as you mentioned. Caught a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, really good receiver out of the backfield. And, and it's just, I mean, it's one of those situations at Liberty where the practices, I bet, are incredibly competitive. Yeah. 
They're going to give it to him again. Not a lot there. Gets a couple right now. Your Liberty. You're leading 55-14. Yeah. You're just trying to keep that clock moving. Keep everybody healthy. Get some reps for guys that maybe don't get a lot of opportunities. Yeah. I like to see Jonathan Bennett. You know, Jonathan Bennett, if you know the story, I believe it was the Syracuse game, first game of the season last year. Was that was it? No, it wasn't that, that game, but it was early in the year. Early in the year ago. where he's a celebration after a touchdown and landed awkwardly on his knee and ended up having a severe knee injury that had him have surgery and and missed out the entire season last year. A real unfortunate incident that happened to Jonathan Bennett, but it's good to see him back out there. I'd like to see him at least sling it around a little bit. Hans Henderson, he's got some room to the far side, trying to make that last man miss. Couldn't do it as a flag flies. And we'll see what that's about as he's going to be a couple yards shy of the first down. Offensive holding, number 19, 10-yard penalty, second down. So Brody Brum called for, I believe that's his second hold today from the wide receiver position. They're back Liberty up. You know, one guy we have not seen on the field for the Flames, at least not in his usual role, is Aiden Alvis. They haven't punted. Aiden hasn't come out of the game yet, has he? He's held on extra yeah. points in a field goal attempt. But yeah, the Liberty offense has not been forced to punt yet today. They got the beef out here to the left side. And it pulls it out. Now he's in trouble. Wrapped up and dropped. The pressure came, and that was Ty Harris, the senior linebacker, getting to him. Yeah, Jonathan Bennett really needs to pull the trigger there. The linebacker had moved up, which opened up that window to throw the slant into the short side of the field. And he just didn't let it go. I thought he had, was going to let it go and could have picked up a completion right there. That will back the Flames up significantly. Brings up third down and 17. You know what we haven't seen a lot of this year, Matt? Who's that? The, the lost art. The screenplay. Yeah. Where's the screenplay? Liberty man? does not run a lot. Screen. Run screens. A lot of teams. I haven't seen any teams run screens. And off near side. And that's going to lose yardage as well. So the Flames move in the wrong direction these last couple of plays. Talk about next week and Liberty heading to North Carolina State. Well, Liberty has one of the longest win streaks in the country right now. They've won nine straight dating back to last year. The only oh. team with one longer, Notre Dame. We've talked a little bit about them today. And then you look at Coastal Carolina down there, Liberty's final opponent. Liberty is in some rarefied air right now, doing things this program has never done before. You know, you, you call for him, you mention his name, and what do you know, here comes it on cue. Aiden Alvis, oh, but not no. the punt. They're going to try to bomb oh. one. So this will be a 54-yard uh -oh. field goal. Plate clock running down. They got to hurry. Three they time. get the snap away. The kick is away. And, and he, he got it. it. <laughs> Alex Barbier. The legend How about of the pipes him? continues the to grow. The legend continues to grow. How about that? 51-yarder a week ago. 54-yarder new career high. As he had to, they had to hustle. Yeah. The play clock was about to run out. I mean, it was right as it was running out. But watch his kick. Good, solid kick. I'll tell you what. Right after that thing went through, what was his bench? 405? You could have put right. 450 on the bar. He's, he would have got it up. It up. Right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's jacked after this one. No time to think about it. Yeah. Just let her rip. Yeah. And right there after right it's over, the run straight over to the sidelines. Get the bench press out. Put 425 out. They really Bam, one rep. They should have a bench over there. They should there have so it ready for just go it. Yeah. Bust I mean, you, you hit a 54-yard, the adrenaline's pumping. That's right. How about this? This is there pretty good. Here he is doing his curls. And like, Watch Hugh Freeze. Freeze. Look at Hugh he Freeze. He jumps in. The, well, I think <laughs> he's got the styro, foam roller. He's got styrofoam. Yeah, it's a foam roller. He's over there pumping. Some, this is pregame. That's uh, Alex Barbier's routine. <laughs> they're, you think they're loose? You think they're having yeah, some they're fun having in that time. locker room? Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. Hugh Freeze. Keeping it lively oh, the is. Poor, you know, the kicker's life is, is it's so conditional love. You know, it's 100% conditional That's love. True. You know, that kid misses a few field goals, missing Virginia Tech. Oh, all the hobnobbing and joking ain't going on right yeah, now. Yeah. But, That's you know, true. that's the life of a kicker. Enjoy it while you can, young man. Enjoy it while you can. Liberty with that field goal now. 
they have scored the most points in any game this season they've scored. They, they've surpassed the 56 they hung on Southern Miss back in late October. That one booted momentarily, and now Calvin Jones will just take a knee. So this Liberty offense just continues to get better and better. They came in 18th in the country in points per game at about 38 a contest, and they dropped 58 here today. 619 total yards. That's a lot of yards. Six minutes and seven seconds away for adding to what has already been their best start in program history. Will Jones coming back in at quarterback as he and Mark Wright have alternated yeah. at the position today. I like how they keep mixing it up. Malik Richardson in the backfield. They give it to him. And he gets a couple of yards before he's slung down. He's a running back that's listed as 6'4". You don't see that. I look at the kid, number 10. He's a big kid. Tall back. They always talk about running backs running low. It's hard to do when you're six foot four, but he is a, he's a tall kid back there. Eddie George could run tall. Remember that guy? Eddie George, I had an Eddie George jersey back in the day. Yeah, back in the day? Yeah. He was an absolute he and Steve monster. McNair were clicking. Oh. Kevin Dyson, Frank Whitecheck. Those were the ah, great, what a call. great Titans teams. Oh, I love it. They hand off to him again, and he'll get it out to the 15-yard line. That ball come out. They're saying he was down. down. Claims to Carl Poole saying, give me another one. And they're saying he was down. So they'll bring up third, five or that six. Was a, that was the Titans' one-yard short team, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Uh, take a look, make sure that he's down. There's that knee. Oh, oh. oh. after further review. Do you dare this one? Do you, you dare, dare as a referee in this game? Do you we go to the review? Or say, all right, boy, snap the ball. So Donovan Spencer. Yeah, oh, they're yeah, gonna do yeah, it. Yeah. The previous play is under further review. Well, Flames may just get the ball back here in the red zone. Yep, like a shot at another one. Here's another look, and yeah, it does not appear either knee was down there as it was punched out. Carl Poole, who had the interception earlier. Carl Poole having a game. And the interception and force fumble, and I and believe he was the one that came out with it also. All right, for all you young, see that's on yeah. purpose. All you young aspiring linebackers out there, Whenever somebody has a guy wrapped up, see how he's the running back's wrapped up? Next thing you do is take your eyes to the brown of the ball. Punch the brown of the ball, just like Poole did right there. And that's what caused those turnovers. The first guy's got to come in. He's got to wrap up the tackler. And as that tackler's going down and you're coming to clean it up, take your eyes to the brown of the ball and then punch that thing loose. Really nice play by Poole. That kind of stuff gets me fired up, man. So they're continuing to review it as it looked like that got punched out at about the 14 or so. And picked up right about there as well by Poole. He punched it and picked it up, didn't he? So the Flames are going to, it would appear, although we were wrong on the targeting penalty earlier today when they were reviewing that one, it would appear that this is pretty clear cut, going to be Liberty football. Just under five minutes to go in this ballgame. After further review, the ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by Liberty at the 14-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Liberty at the 14. Third turnover forced today by this Flames defense. They only had forced nine all season coming in. A couple of picks, now a fumble recovery. I mean, Poole's coming off the sidelines over there, getting congratulated by everybody. He is jacked up. A really good football game. Yeah, another, another quarterback here? We're going to see our fourth quarterback, freshman Sean Brown, coming in. Play QB for Liberty. Freshman out of Apex, North Carolina. Gives it to Troy Henderson. 
It's a couple of yards, stays in bounds, keeps that clock moving. Sean Brown, three-star recruit. It's our first opportunity to see him in action. They've really tried to give Troy Henderson a lot of carries over the last few drives. I'd like to be able to see him stick his foot in the ground, get north and south, get his shoulder square. Give it to him again. Good push from the offensive line as he gets down inside the 10-yard line. Flames trying to break 60 if they put points on the board here. Really, their biggest concern right now is just running time off the yep. clock and getting out of here with that W. You know, it's always good to work on your red zone offense when you get down a third down. This could be a third down conversion within the red zone. Like to see what kind of plays Hugh Free. Hugh Freeze is still coaching. You know, see the type of plays that he draws up in the red zone. Again to Henderson. He stood up. He'll be about two yards shy of the first down. So these are always those situations where you go for a field goal. Nah, you feel you're, like you, you kind of feel like it. you're, you know, you're not trying to, yeah, you know, rub your opponent's nose in it. But at the same time, you just, you know, there's no right answer. I think yeah. whether you kick a field goal or you go for it, I don't know that either you're way. Get the inside run right here. Same play, basically the same play as last time, or a quarterback follow on fourth down is what I would expect. They're going to let that play clock run all the way down. That showdown next week in NC State. Listen, 7.30 game on the ACC Network, and Liberty's played day games basically all yeah. year long. So this will be the first time Different. they will play a night That's, contest. That makes a big difference when they have to sit this around season, that hotel yeah. all day long. Timeout. Liberty, first charge of this half. Liberty takes a timeout. We'll take one as well. The Flames looking to close out this ball game when we come back. I wasn't going very far. Sometimes I just forget. We made USAA insurance for veterans like Martin. When a hailstorm hit, he needed his insurance to get it done right, right away. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. USAA. Well, our next UFC fight night today in Las Vegas, only on ESPN Plus. Paul Felder took this fight on five days' notice because of injury. He takes on Rafael Dos Anjos. Dos Anjos, who moves down in weight in the lightweight main event. The prelims start at 4 p.m. Eastern with the main card at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific in English and Spanish. To get ESPN Plus, go to ESPNPlus.com or download the ESPN app. You're a big UFC guy, Joe. You know, do you want me to give you some UFC uh, fight night facts? Yeah, do it. Let's watch this fourth down play. Okay. Let's some fight. Hand off, coming near side. Inside the five, lunging for the end zone. I don't think he got in. I'm also not sure he held on to the football. No, they're calling it a fumble, it looks like. I think Troy Henderson kind of just tossed that football towards the end zone, and they're saying it's sure a touchback. Enough. Reaching for the pylons, one thing, you, you aren't allowed to throw it that way. The ruling on the field, the ball was fumbled from the field of play into and out of the end zone. The ruling will be a touchback. First down, Western Carolina. Well, we're getting another look at it here. And yeah, he just oh, kind of, he, he, he did hit the pylon. That was yeah, good. Yeah, but it was out of his hands. It was good accuracy. <laughs> but yeah, yeah you got to hold the ball. Definitely hold, Definitely want to hold the ball. And they would have picked up the first down. It wasn't a do yep. or die situation. Right. They would have gotten the first down. I wish, that's the time you wish you had a pylon cam. Yeah. Yeah, you could, yeah, that would have well, been a great angle yeah, on the pylon cam. I wish we had a pylon cam. There's, <laughs> you see Troy trying to reenact it. What I was doing was, <laughs> I was trying to yeah, talk. you freeze. He yeah. said, yeah, let's talk. Yeah. There's lesson learned, lesson learned. So the ball goes back to the Catamounts, 2.20 to go. Hand off. Short pickup on first down. That carry was to Bradley. 
Marquis Bradley with the carry. So we're working our way down through the depth chart on both sides. It'll be interesting to see for Western Carolina the improvement between week one and two. What do coaches always say? Is that one? Yep. Some to the far side. Nice catch. Run after the catch there for Luke Sutton. Coaches always say the biggest improvement comes yeah, no doubt. between week one and week two of the season. So they go to Eastern Kentucky next week. It'll be interesting to see what they look like then with one game under their belt. Yeah, to be able to get a game, to get a game of actual film. You know how tiring it must be watching practice film every day for the kids, for the coaches, and have an actual game film that they can put on tomorrow and do a lot of teaching, a lot of learning, and get better for the next game. It gives them something to play for. It's really good. And off again, that's Bradley. Stood up, dropped after a one-yard gain, but that's all he needed. They get the first down, move the chains. Check in one more time with Emily Austin, Emily. Yeah, guys, another thing that's been difficult for this Western Carolina game, or this Western Carolina team is head coach Mark Spear was saying, we don't have team room, team meeting rooms big enough to socially distance. We've only been on Zoom. So this is not only the first time that this team has all gone on the field together, but really meeting and, and going through the whole travel and, and getting all that um, learning tips to uh, figure out how to do that for their conference season, which starts in February. Yeah, they're just thrilled to have gotten a game under the belt, to have all his players yep. together. Yeah. He said no one knows each other still. He feels yeah. like they haven't been able to build relationships. It's been frustrating for him this year. And just to have a game, despite what the yeah. scoreboard says, he'll be able to take some positives out of this moving forward, no doubt. Yeah, when you listen to Coach Spear and talk with him, he's such a relational coach. I mean, that's what he wants, and so it's got to be killing him. But at the same time, to be able to get on the airplane together, get on the bus together and come here and be able to eat together and play this game is a step in the right direction. On the other side, as you see the big tackle made there by Kendy Charles, young man out of Haiti. He has a great story. Maybe we'll Oh, we've got 17 seconds. We'll say maybe, maybe save another time. He'll, yeah. He has a long career ahead of him. <laughs> On the other side for Liberty, you're about to get your 10th straight win and do what many thought would be impossible before this season. The, the, the season they have had, what they've been able to do. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And they will now go to North Carolina State next week with the wow. chance to continue to shock the country and move ahead with an unbeaten season. But for now, 8-0 with the win, 58-14 over Western Carolina. Joe, time for one last takeaway. What do you take out of this one for the Flames moving forward? Well, I'll take away that nobody, nobody yet has proven that they can stop Malik Willis. And we're going to find out a lot more with that topic next Saturday in Raleigh. Over 400 yards of total offense, five total TDs for Malik Willis in the win. So for Joe Yock, Emily Austin, I'm Matt Warner saying so long from Lynchburg, Virginia. For the final score is Liberty 58, Western Carolina 14. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.